Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Game Face, episode 382 on Sifted Games at sifted.net. I'm Shane Satterfield, your host for the next couple hours of awesome video game discussion. And as always, alongside me to do that is Matthew Kyle. What's up, Matt? Hey. How's the week going for you? I don't know. It's only Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a week since I've seen you, I mean. Oh, uh, I suppose. Yeah. How was your Easter? Did you do anything special? No, I played a board game and ate Cadbury eggs. So you had some friends over to play yeah. board games? Well, that's something. I mean, I'm, it wasn't for Easter. I worked all day Easter, so <laughs> you were yeah. definitely one up on me. I had to do dossier all day on Easter Sunday to get it done for yesterday mm -hmm. uh, before the uh, month turned over, obviously. Dossier is our rundown of all the games coming out in a given month. Uh, so I was working on that on Easter Sunday. I did get some awesome Easter candy, though, and I'm happy about that. Any mm -hmm. cool candy that you got for Easter? Well, apparently the same as you did. Yeah. Um, I discovered new, a new candy that I love. I mean, I bought a bunch of candy. I didn't. Nobody gave it to me. Yeah. But I always get Cadbury cream eggs, even though several years ago the American ones changed the chocolate formula. It doesn't taste as good anymore. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. That was like 10 years ago. They're also smaller now than they used to be. That's Shrink a shrinkflation. Shrinkflation. <laughs> Although apparently not I, only Gatorade did that. I, a but. couple times I, w I have imported UK ones because the Cadbury chocolate there is still good. Mm -hmm. But then I've been told by some of my UK friends that they changed the chocolate a year or two ago as well, and that that chocolate sucks now too. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I am. Um, They're still good though. I, I, you know, I don't dislike them. We well, hinted at the candy that I discovered this Easter, and I, <laughs> I love Twix. The candy bars. The one thing I hate about them is how they're so narrow in like these skinny mm. little strips. Well, they for Easter they release eggs, Twix shaped like eggs, and mm. so they're like this big around, and they're made like Twix with the cookie yeah. and the caramel like and the chocolate. Twix. They are delicious. Um, <laughs> I mean, go get them now. They're probably they're for half of, price, and they kind of come apart nicer. Than uh huh. Because the, the main ones kind of you get that chew and they. Sort no, of you're right. Pull, yeah. Like the the eggs on the. I think they've they've done the eggs for a few years. I've definitely I've gotten them before. Um, I usually got to go to, around here. At least you got to go to Target to find them. That was the first I, time I've ever seen them, and now I'm in love. But they'll, they'll go on, away now. I, Easter's yeah, over. Well, they're usually on display in Target with the because they also have the peanut butter eggs mm. in, the, in the separate in the large. The they're, Reese's. In the, they're in the flat larger packs. Yeah. Um, but those Twix eggs go like that. Like I went looking for more of them last week, and they were all gone. Yeah. I got I get my Easter candy like at the beginning of the month. That's cause smart. Because otherwise they go away and you never see them again. Well, that's coming from both of us. If you're into chocolate and candy, get the Twix eggs if you can find them. They're gonna be gone if you can find maybe even be discounted now because easter's over oh, they'd all be discounted if you can still i mean people know that though so like i was at the grocery store yesterday and there was no ravaged <laughs> it was all gone. that whole section was already changed over to the summer stuff uh -huh. it was all just twizzlers and mike and ike's yeah which apparently is summer candy mike and know. ike's people still eat mike and ike's some people do. i don't know those are like, gross the other gross candy is like the neko wafers you ever see those those come oh, around, yeah. used to come around on easter there's these like Almost like plastic wafers with like dust on them, and they're oh, in a roll. Yeah, I know those. They're yeah. disgusting. And then there's peanuts. You ever have those like Circus candy peanuts? Those things are oh, yeah. disgusting too. Yeah, I got. Some, I have some, know some people who they're, 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 they're the, the circus peanuts are their favorite candy. There's always one. The, the people love the circus peanuts, <laughs> and the people love the Swedish fish. I don't like Swedish gotta, fish gotta, either. Got to be watched. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, How I don't, are, I'm not a big candy person. I'm more of a chocolate person. Yeah. So like I'm, you know, Mike and I, you know, candy being like the confectioner or stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm more of a peanut butter cup, Twix, hundred grand. Hundred grands are great. Uh, hundred grands are really good if you can find. Every They're hard while, to find. Every once in a while, I find the the snack size bag of them. I get them, put them in the bowl on the counter, and everybody comes over. You have hundred grand. <laughs> I haven't seen everybody this reacts to hundred grand. Yeah, they're like, great. Yeah. But you don't see them anymore. No, They've like disappeared. Rare. Um, anyway, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys had a good Easter holiday. If you celebrate, even if you don't, you can still eat some candy like I did. Um, let's check in with you guys, actually. Let's bring you guys up and see what you're up to. Uh, matter of fact, I bought a one kilogram bag of mini eggs from Costco. It's too much. Yeah, you'll be eating yeah. those for a really long time. But uh, mini eggs don't go bad. So. That's true. Um, Congrim one says Reese's is my go-to. Most people, I think, Same. the Reese's peanut butter eggs are, is everyone's favorite yeah, Reese, Easter Reese's candy. Reese's is the best. It's my wife's sure. favorite Easter candy as well. Um, a lot. I think that's common for a lot of people, honestly. Um, and, I, uh, I can't eat them because I'm allergic to nuts. Mm -hmm. um, so, unfortunately, I can't try, but I know a lot of people really love them. Um, Whatchamacallit, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, those were good, too. Um, but those had peanut butter in them, I think. They have everything in yeah. them. Yeah. I'm sure that. I think they have actual peanuts in general. Those in are them. old school as well, yeah. actually. Um, Andy T. Monahan says inflation means a lot of unsold eggs. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Sweet and sour Twizzlers. I've never had that before. But I don't like twizz. I don't like Twizzlers or licorice stuff, so I would never. Try I'm not it. a big licorice person either. The other thing that I got that I really liked are, um, um, what were they? They're special jelly beans that are um, oh, sweet tart jelly beans. Yeah, I can see that. Those are delicious. Um, Justin Horman says nerd ropes are top tier candy. I've never seen those. I've seen. I just I'm not a ropey candy person. I just it, no interest. I also didn't care for bubble tape. Oh. It was six feet of bubble gum for you, not them. Do you remember Big League I Chew? Oh, of course. They don't make yeah. that anymore. Because <laughs> it was like fake chewing tobacco for kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they used well, to I make they used... candy cigarettes. And... Well, I remember they used... they discontinued the chocolate one. Or they made the chocolate flavor specifically at the request of actual MLB athletes because they wanted to look like they were chewing tobacco. Oh. But they quit the tobacco. Interesting. But the t- chocolate made it look like it was tobacco. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, they don't make that anymore. I remember when I used to play in Little League, there would be a little concession stand there. Mm-hmm. And between games, I'd go there and every, all the kids bought the Big League Chew. It even mm-hmm. came in a bag oh, yeah, that like looked the, like a tobacco yeah. bag. You just can't get away with that stuff anymore. I mean, you can still get Big League Chew. Can you? Still around, yeah. I think so. I haven't seen it I've forever. Seen, I, I haven't. I mean, I haven't been to Galco Soda Stop up in Echo Park in a while, but last yeah. time I was there a few years ago, they had Big League Chew right wow. next to the candy cigarettes, That's... which is also something that will blow the minds <laughs> of a few people cigarettes. who aren't old They had old. the ones where if you um, blew out on them, the smoke would come yeah. out. They had, like, dust it's inside dust and them, powder, and then yeah, dust powder, would come out. Which I'm sure was great for your... For your lungs. Oh yeah, because you're uh, breathing it in before you're breathing little, it out. A little like candy red on the end. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. It was a trip, man. Uh, to grow up in the '70s and '80s, it was a different time yeah. for sure. <laughs> or, or just trying to explain to a younger kid like what Lickamade was. Right, right. It's like, yeah, you got this the nondescript stick. stick of sugar, <laughs> yeah. I guess, and it's you candy. licked it. You like put it all through your mouth. And then you like stuck it in this bag full a of powder pixie dust <laughs> yeah. and pulled it out and sucked it again. And, it was and a, they'll just stare at you like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was a piece of hard sugar that you dipped into powdered sugar and yeah. then licked the powdered sugar off of the piece of mm-hmm. hard sugar. <laughs> it's just crazy. Or just pixie sticks in general. Those are still around, I think. Still around. I imagine they would be. Yeah. yeah. They were called dipping something or other. I can't remember what they were called. Anyway. There's lots of candy that Matt and I used to have that they just don't make anymore for cultural reasons. I'll or... tell you the one I miss is, um, well, I miss PB Crisp. Nobody, nobody remembers. I don't remember that. That, that was, uh, it was like a snack. It was a snack like kind of cracker almost, but it was like fake peanut shells filled with peanut butter from like uh, from uh, planters. From no, the, well, you the, can see why I would, would not, not be to, familiar with that. But one. my <laughs> other one, my other go-to, this only existed for about six months in 1993, I think, but it was Butterfinger milk. Milk, milk. Oh, so that milk sounds delicious. Flavored like Butterfinger. <laughs> and the only place I ever saw that had it was the Seven Eleven next to the Comic Store Arcade porn rental shop that I worked at <laughs> in high school. And I, on my breaks, I'd go over and I'd get a carton of Butterfinger milk and just down the whole thing. It was, I mean, it's peanut butter Butterfinger flavor. Milk. Delicious. It's one of the best things I've ever tasted. Even, well, it's like they it make a Cap and Crunch milk even, which yeah. is also really good. Unbelievable. And like Butterfinger, I, I, there wasn't even a picture of it on on the internet until a few years ago when someone found an old unopened one and took a picture next to a Bart Simpson figure <laughs> and then like I assume threw it out because that's gotta be a time bomb oh, if you yeah. open that I don't even want, want to know botulism really. yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Um, but I, so they discontinued after like six months, presumably because I was the only person in the world who liked it. And I went over, uh, to, to get my Butterfinger milk and it was gone and I, there was no more Butterfinger milk. And I, so I got a chocolate one and I came, went up to the guy, the owner who was this older, uh, Indian guy, um, who, who owned the store forever and knew me, of course, cause I was uh-huh. there every, almost every day. And I went up and I'm just like, like, when are you getting more Butterfinger? I'm like, he's like, oh, never like that. They discontinued it. And he's like, one run, and, and I'm that like, was it. What? And, I'm like, I, 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 that, and, he's, and he's like, he's like, he's like, you know what? Your your next, the rest of the week, your chocolate milk's free because oh. because if it wasn't for you, I'd be stuck with that Butterfinger <laughs> shit on the shelf for like months. That's great. And he's like, you saved me some work. <laughs> That's like, awesome. He's like, you saved me some work, and I can see you're disappointed. So you can have some free milk for for a while. That's great. So uh, let's get back to you guys and see what's up. Um, Eve Demon, Dragon's Dogma 2, sold 2.5 million copies. Yep, that's up on Sifted right now. Yeah. Maybe you were there earlier and you saw it. Um, that kind of game, that's amazing. Yeah, it's already sold double what the first game did yeah. in two weeks. And the first one's, like, sales were mostly back-end, like, mm-hmm. super discount. Word of kind of mouth thing. stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, Clip 20 thank you for subscribing at Tier 1. Ilyagic, Yag-X, Ilyagix? How do you think you say that one? Ilya, Ilya GX. Maybe? Ilya GX. Thank you for Twitch Prime, however we say your name. Uh, maybe you can phonetically spell it for us in the chat. 
Uh, what else we got here? Link so good. Thank you for Twitch Prime. Shora F. Thank you for Twitch Prime. I think that's it so far. You guys, a ton of you guys hit us up with Twitch Prime in last week's episode, so I'm not surprised that there are less today. Um, yeah, watch him call it Charles and Chu. Mm. <laughs> I forgot about that one as well. That's from Contano. Um, what else we got? Rock and Roll four five eight. Thank you for Twitch Prime. Uh, let's see if we've got any more here. Yep, I love Big League Chew. I mean, it was really just bubble gum that was yeah, shredded. Yeah, we still have Big League Chew here in Alabama. You can get it places. Wow, that's crazy. Um, fun Dip, that's what it was. Pharaoh mm. Doll reminds mm. us that's what it was, Fun Dip. Dip and Dots are the ice cream that you can yeah. get at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, but then there's do- the Dip and dots. Lick, yeah. <laughs> but there was also the Candy Dots thing where like they just came on a sla- sla- like a piece of paper. Nerds were kind of like that too, actually. No, I remember that. Well, yeah, they looked like the pills was, on a piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, they'd like, a punch them out or pull, <laughs> yeah, so like, peel them off or something. Like, I, I can't even remember that. That's crazy. Um, Vortex says, don't throw it out, preserve history. Well, it, until it explodes, it sprays botulism yeah, all over. 30 year old milk is probably not something you need in your house. Nope. Uh, Stolte69, thank you for Twitch Prime. That's awesome. And I think that's it. Um, I love the cream eggs. Hope you're both well. You too, Luke. Hope you're doing good, man. I was right. It's Elia GX. Is that how you say it? That's what they said. Uh, Matt Mug got my name right. Okay, great. We'll try to remember it next time, but I can't promise anything. <laughs> it's hard to remember everybody's username here on our chat. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's been a actually surprisingly gameplay heavy week for me. Like last week, I looked ahead and I was like, oh, I don't know how we're going to do a show next. It's just funny how things just always fall okay. into place. There's always a demo. Then. There's always early access to something. There's just somehow, some way, we always get a good episode yeah. of Game well, Face we together. We also forgot Aiden Chronicle. So. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be in last week's episode. We went way over last week. We were like three hours and 20 minutes last week. We're going to try to avoid that this week. But we do have another big show, so maybe we shouldn't spend too much time screwing around. Maybe we should get the housekeeping right away. That probably is actually the best idea. Let's get straight to it. Um, So Easter was this past week. Um, Obviously, we just talked about all the awesome candy that some of you guys maybe got. Uh, But another thing that just happened over the last week was April Fool's Day. And we talk about April Fool's Day every year here on Game Face because for whatever weird reason, even my wife at this point knows this. The gaming industry does crazy April Fool stuff. I don't know why it's been this way since my first day in the industry. The games industry has always just done tons of April Fool's jokes. before that. Yeah. Like the... I mean, the, the, why has the, this happened? Do you think? I don't know. It's just, some, of it's, some of it's because like gaming, gaming has always been so like kind of word of mouth and rumor fueled mm-hmm. that it's easy to like make something up. There's also like people always want something different or something more. And and back in the day, like you know, you could make up anything you wanted. I mean, the the old days. I mean, the, I think the 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 er video gaming April Fool is EGM's. Um, uh, Shang Long mm-hmm. joke, yeah, um, which involves that's what kind of started photo, the whole <laughs> screenshot editing and <laughs> yeah. much of that. But I mean, that yeah. comes from the fact that in the old arcade scene, people would make up bullshit about things they saw in the game at some other arcade you'd never heard of. Oh, yeah. Chun Li throwing her bracelets, or like you can throw red fireballs, which was actually true, but it didn't matter because it was just a graphical glitch. It happened like one out of every hundred fireballs or something. Uh, Guile's handcuffs, which were real, uh, a, 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 a glitch you could pull off in certain yeah. things. Uh, Chun Li never threw. That's why Chun Li has a fireball now because of the the bracelet rumor that flew around for years right. beforehand. Like that always happened. Yeah. And, yeah. Or how to the different codes you could put into play as the bosses before Champion Edition came out. But like it was codes like, were the lowest hanging fruit. Oh, April my Fool's cousin, joke. my cousin did it at this arcade <laughs> right. over out in like Modesto. You wouldn't know them. Like a forty yeah. input right. chain that you're like, I don't. You could, they never get busted because you never knew if you put you it in right. It. Well, that was the genius of the EGM <laughs> yeah. Long thing was to, you know they had screenshots. You know uh-huh. it looked you know low red but it looked convincing enough yeah, if you were anyway. good enough um and like i think it was to op- to unlock him basically you had to um you had to f- you had to perfect every single round of the game mm-hmm. and then when you got to m bison you had to tie two rounds you had to tie two rounds <laughs> to go to the draw and you couldn't get hit yeah no it wasn't draw you had to not get hit and let the time run out on M. Bison. Like, no no getting hit, no hitting him, so the time ran out to tie yeah. two rounds in a row, which is impossible. Right. Like you can't actually, that's not, no. Like, you can't get through an M. Bison Street Fighter Two fight without blocking. No, it's something. impossible. It's not yeah. going to happen. And then if you do that, then you get the, draw, the, the, the sudden death match, and 
before he can fight you, Shenglong comes out and grabs him and throws him off the screen, and then you have to fight Shenglong. Right, yeah. Now, people who <laughs> have played Street Fighter later on re- will realize that this is exactly how Akuma comes on the screen in his original appearance in Street Fighter yeah. Turbo, and that's because of this joke. Yeah. Like, he it literally... Akuma Manifest exists destiny. because the EGM <laughs> joke was so prevalent. And yeah. I remember when that came out, like for the next week, you had to deal with people trying who didn't it. want you to play them in Street Fighter because yeah. they were trying to get Shang Long to unlock. <laughs> and it's just like uh, that started it, yeah. And so, like ever since then, it get you know these and some of this stuff. So I mean, Sega tends to make a free game for yeah. Resident Evil Fools. Everyone's done once it in a while. bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. One of the questions I got for this last episode of Ashing Anything was why do game players, gamers, fall so easily for rumors? Because a lot of people who play video games are dumb. <laughs> well, my answer was, it's not just gamers. It's everybody. Like, look at like all the crazy conspiracy theories that people fall for now. Like, it's not mm-hmm. just gamers. I think the internet is responsible for a lot of this, yeah. honestly. Well, I mean, the internet definitely propagates it easier. Mm-hmm. Um, and people forget what day it is. And then, like, you have the dateline issue. So, like, people in the UK and, and Europe start, like... You know, putting up their April Fool's stuff when, stuff when it's like afternoon on the 31st here. And so yeah. people are like, wah, 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 wah. And, uh, and then people in California are putting them up like after the April Fool's has right. ended on the other <laughs> side of the planet. So like there's a whole disconnect there. Yeah. I woke up yesterday to a bunch of unsent messages from my friends who all realized that they sent me some bullshit, apparently. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what they were. But, uh-huh. you know, yeah. You let, you let people get away with that. When that it's like, okay, yeah. we're not going to. We're not going to push you on that. You got fooled and you realized it. <laughs> well, the only, and it's become the only day of the year anyone actually fact checks anything they read on the you're internet. You're right. Yeah. Well, this year, for whatever reason, the gaming April Fool stuff was bigger than ever by like several magnitudes. So we were very picky. I mean, that's what we do on Sit that we curate. So we I picked, didn't see many. Well, we picked the good stuff and that's what we do in general. But we also did that with the April Fool stuff. And so there's like five or six pretty good ones. And then just does i'm not exaggerating matt dozens of others for these like it's like if you have a small indie game that no one's ever heard of your april fool's joke is not gonna work mm-hmm. like nobody cares like there were just dozens of these april fool's jokes that no one just no one cared where they created like trailers like fake trailers and all this elaborate stuff and like no one cares so our job at sifted is to find the good stuff and then give it to you guys so that's so that's what we did and that's what we're gonna do right now here on game face i collected basically the best April Fool's jokes. And one thing I'll say, Matt, is that, like, a lot of publishers and outlets have just given up as far as, like, trying to fool people. That used to be the trick, was, like, I'll make a story that's crazy, but just plausible enough that maybe I can get a couple of the editors to run the story or whatever. That used to be the goal. Now I think people have figured it out. And so mm-hmm. instead of, like, well, trying... So there's no there's no outlets left. The, to, that's to one part anymore, of it. That's so. a good point, actually. But even those outlets that are left now, they, they just tend to try to do something cool instead mm-hmm. of something that's going to fool people. And that's what some of these were. However, there was one that was both cool and was so cool that it was almost plausible. And the coolest thing that I saw of all the April Fool's jokes yesterday was the Pokemon Sleep World Championship. Did you see this, Matt? No. So, do you know what Pokemon Sleep is? No. So, it's a sleeping app, literally, that you start up when you go to sleep, and it measures, like, how long you're in REM sleep, how (laughs) long you're, like, with, like, you're moving around. It basically is, like, trying to encourage you to do the right thing so that you get good sleep. It's this app that came and went, like, two months ago. Nobody cared because it's not really a game. It's literally just an app that has, like, Snorlax, like, fronting it or whatever. Well, Nintendo and Pokemon Company were very clever, and look at what they did. They created this fake event where people compete at sleeping. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant the way that they've done it. I've chopped this down a good bit because it's really long. And obviously, I didn't want to show the whole stinking thing here on Game Face. But the way that they've cut it together, the presentation va- values, the production values of this, just incredible. The way the announcers, like, narrate it and, like, get, like, get you hyped up. Like, once it starts and they're doing, like, the play-by-play of them sleeping. It's just freaking brilliant. And again, it's, it's like you think about... What's the payoff for this? Are more people going to download Pokemon Sleep? Maybe. I never heard of it before. Now you know about it, right? So it didn't raise awareness. But I think really it was just them trying to just have fun. Like, look at the money that they've spent on this. It's insane. (laughs) Like, I really thought it was brilliant. Just the way that they did it, the way they presented it, the concept, the idea, um, and the fact that it wasn't just a blatant cash-in trying to get people to go buy something. Because this is also free, by the way. Like, you don't have to pay for it. So I thought this was oh ferret all saying it doesn't work on all phones what pokemon sleep 
Mm. I didn't know that, actually. No. Um, but anyway, I thought this was the most clever April Fool's joke for 2024, and also the one where they went the furthest, other than my runner-up, which is IGN this year. Did you see IGN's? Mm. So IGN... I think the only ones I saw were Minecraft and... Um... Uh, somebody posted a micro Dreamcast oh. that wasn't real, which was oh, irri- I that, really irritating to I me. I didn't see that one. Well, it wasn't a video; it was just a picture and like another picture of like the games that were on it. I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. I totally buy that, but it's fake. So, uh, well, IGN did a Virtual Boy Pro as its April Fool's joke. Now, again, IGN doesn't think this is going to fool anybody. You know, they know at this point that everybody knows it's April Fool's Day. No one's going to believe it or whatever. But I thought that they did a pretty good job with this um, because it also kind of is riding the tailwinds of Apple Vision Pro. Everyone's kind of talking about that Mm -hmm. right now. It just went on sale not long ago. It's very similar in concept. Um, So I thought IGN did a good job. And let's be honest, IGN, I feel like, does a pretty good job with these every year. They always create some fake product, basically, and then do a cool trailer for them. Uh, So I thought IGN's was pretty good this year. Again, the Virtual Boy Pro. Then we can start getting to some of the smaller guys. Razer also always does an April Fool's joke. It's joke this year, and maybe I should just wait here so the punchline can be delivered by the trailer itself, is a new gaming chair. Obviously, it's Razer. They make gaming peripherals, and this is called the Razer Cthulhu. Mm. And <laughs> Razer Cthulhu is like a Doc Ock gaming chair, basically, that feeds you, <laughs> combs your hair, brushes your teeth, While you're playing video games. Um, I thought this was pretty clever, too. Also, some significant investment went into this to actually build it. Or most of this is probably fake. But um, I thought Razer did a pretty good job. And again, Razer does this every year. I mean, they're clearly using puppetry for some of this. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, I thought they did a great... That's CG, but like the stuff where he's being... That stuff. Like, that's puppets. Yeah, yeah. I thought uh, Razer did a pretty good job. And again, they do something every year. And then another cool one that the outlets did is from YouTube channel Game Explain. It did a, and we curate a lot of stuff from Game Explain. They generally cover mostly Nintendo stuff, and they do a really good job with it. Um, but they did a fake trailer for Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. Obviously, with its audience at Game Explain, this hits right to the heart of the people who are actually watching their content. However, in Game Explain's world, <laughs> Metroid Prime 4 has taken a twist, and it is now called. Metroid Prime 4 yeah. because they have turned it into a golfing game which and then created had somebody create the gameplay for this there's like a good like 30 seconds of gameplay from this in this little fake trailer the game explain made pretty impressive stuff man um and, and again this is an outlet realizing look we're not going to fool anybody with this stuff so let's just have some fun with it and do some cool stuff um, that it, said, if this popped up as a mini game and something, that would not surprise yeah. me one bit. Well, there was already Metroid Prime Pinball. Remember? Yeah. Was that GBA? I can't remember. Was, I want to say that was DS. But didn't it have like a Rumble Cart? If I remember correctly, there was no, force was feedback. Pokemon, Pokemon had Pokemon Pinball. Oh, uh, okay. I knew it was one. It did, of them. No, it did have a. It did. You're right. It, it was a DS game, and the DS thing went, and it had there was a Rumble cartridge, like the Game Boy Advance cartridge size that went in the Game Boy Advance slot. Slot. Yeah. Two, two, I knew it. Like I thought there was something special about it. Um, so look, we're already open to doing crazy stuff with Metroid. So this game explain thing is got to be better than Federation Force. <laughs> That's probably a good point. Um, so anyway, props to Game Explain. They went the extra mile. They had one of their friends, or maybe they did the CG for the actual gameplay. I thought they did a good job with it. And then a couple of the smaller ones, Arma Reforger did an Army Men thing. Matt, do you remember when Army Men used to be gigantic in the oh, gaming yeah. industry? Well, yeah, because I worked in retail stores at the time and like couldn't fucking keep track of them all. Like, Dude, was... the N64 game sold in the millions. Yeah. And they were not good games. People used to come and ask for the army men on the army men. Sarge's Heroes or whatever. Sarge's Heroes on PS1. We couldn't keep it in stock. Yeah, it's insane. And so Arma, I think, is trying to latch on to some of that nostalgia from that era of video games. And and this is actually real, by the way. This is actually a little event that you can play through. And that's been a, that was a challenge throughout the last day or so. Trying to figure out whether this stuff is real or if it's just a trailer that they made. Mm. A lot of times, like, they don't explain it in, like, the clip description, like, whether it's real or fake or not. So it was hard to tell with some of these whether they were real. This one, in fact, is real. Yeah. The, the Minecraft one was real. Yeah. Um, which, it was interesting because, like, people, it actually caused some, like, backlash 
Um, because the Minecraft one was like this, I can't remember exactly what it was, but basically like it was like a separate world you could see, and it had like a Spider-Man swinging thing. You threw a vine up and you could swing on anything in the ceiling or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there were a bunch of Minecraft players who were upset because like apparently the April Fool's joke is more impressive than the last few updates to the actual game. <laughs> and they're like, why don't you do cool shit like that in the actual game instead of it? <laughs> well, do you think the Army Men franchise will ever come back? Do you think people would care now? That's one of those franchises we talked know. about I, that, like, the, I, when I was talking last week about, like, volleyball games going away. And, like, I mean, I would think not, That's kind of like, one of them. But also, like, the people that were, like, eight when they were when these were hot were, are, like, 35 yeah. now. So the nostalgia <laughs> thing is kind of in play yeah. at this point. I do wonder if you made a new Army Men game. And who even owns that IP now? Like, Embracer, probably? Because didn't did THQ own it back in the day? Who published those games? I can't remember. It does, I think it was THQ. I'm I can't remember. Sure. I mean, also, like, I'm sure Disney probably has some kind of, in the interim, stranglehold on that because the popularity of Army Men comes from Toy Story. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, it revived it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yep. Um, so, anyway, that's Army or Arma Reforger, the Army Men event. And then the last one I'm going to point out is something for Street Fighter VI. They are bringing Monster Hunter costumes into Street Fighter VI. This one is real. There are yeah. really going to be Monster Hunter costumes, which... Well, there are Monster Hunter costumes at five. Yeah, so. which honestly doesn't surprise me at all. Because Capcom will do crossovers with anything. Yeah. It will literally cross over its IP with any other IP that it has. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, the the guy from the cover version of Mega Man 1 was in Tekken X Street. Oh, Tekken I forgot Cross about Tekken. that. <laughs> that goofy drawing. Like, they've had Monster Hunter outfits. They've had Resident Evil outfits. They've had every, yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, this was, this is real. Like you can actually get these costumes in Street Fighter 6 and use them if you like want Ken, to. Ken had that armor, like a version of that armor. The oh Rath yeah. The Rathlos armor. Yeah. There are a few of them. Yep. Um, so there you go. Those are the six that really caught my eye. I'm sure maybe you guys found a couple that were impressed you or you thought were really cool or really different or original. Um, but these were the ones that really caught my eye. Spending a ton of time yesterday sorting through all of these. And actually, if you want to see... The, um, the full list of all, like, dozens and dozens of April Fool's jokes for the gaming industry. We have a story curated from Gamatsu right now at Sifted that has them all. And literally, it's like an endless scroll of April Fool's jokes. It's really crazy how big it has become in the games industry. But overall this year, nothing too great. Again, the Pokemon Sleep to me was my favorite one as far as clever and the investment that they put into it. IGN, I thought, did a good job too with its Virtual Boy Pro. But overall... I feel like this is like the third or fourth year in a row where there hasn't been like that killer one where everybody just laughed their ass off at it. So um, this is one of those things that's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. there is, it feels like it's just, oh, there's Luna. Now that the dogs are gone, Luna comes yeah. back. Um, I feel like this is one of those things that's just going to die a slow, painful death. It's just like never going to go away. And it's going to get painfully worse like year after year. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's kind of where we're at with the April Fool's jokes. Uh, but a lot of the things that we do at Sifted are doing the work for you guys, finding the cool stuff and putting it in front of you so you don't have to do it yourself. And that's what we did with the April Fool's jokes for 2024. Next up, Marvel Rivals, Matt, the biggest debut easily of the week it is basically overwatch with marvel characters um too i am a little too late yeah i'm a little surprised the response to this on sifted has been abysmal been that way across the board has it yeah. why is that is it i mean it is just is it just too little too late no one cares about character shooters anymore yeah um no one wants to play a character shooter with marvel characters why um because people want like story driven stuff character driven stuff and single player games from marvel mm -hmm. that's it that, i mean super that's what people want from superheroes they don't want co-op shit they don't want competitive online shit they don't want to be sold microtransactions and skins and everything which is obviously what this is uh, they want to play stuff that captures the characters properly, and that is not this. I think it's pretty cool. Like, look, I don't play a ton of Overwatch, but like, if I in the future once this is out and I have a choice between playing this and Overwatch, I'll play this, provided it's not terrible. Yeah, I, I mean, care more about these characters. I mean, I'm just not going to play either one, right? So yeah. it doesn't. It's not, they're not going to get the audience that wants to play these characters with this kind of game. It's just not going to happen. I mean, um, what if they're just looking for the hero shooter crowd? That thought, was, that thought Overwatch's characters were good enough, and now they have Marvel characters to use and play with. I mean, I think it's easier to make original characters that, that click rather than try to capture some version of a 60-year-old character. Shoehorning to, it into. To, to please everyone, because that's kind of the problem, is like, 
okay, which version are all these? You know, even and you have people that don't know the, the the content enough to like understand that there are different versions of things or even who that is. Right. Yeah. Um, that is not a gender swapped Galactus. That is Galacta, Galactus's daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of whining about that online, where it's like, oh, Why? They, made, they made Galactus a girl. It's woke. Oh, geez. And it's like, no, that's Galacta. <laughs> that's his daughter. <laughs> Um, I don't know what she's doing in this, but like, yeah, that's an established character. There's other. How all... exhausting must it be to go through life just trying to look for stuff like that? Well, on the... What know, a miserable, well, see, what a miserable existence if that it's is. Your entire personality. There's nothing else to do, so you don't know any different. I think it's probably easier that way. Wow. Um, <laughs> Get a life, man. That's all I gotta say. If Get they had a life, life. They wouldn't be upset about people that don't look like them appearing in media. You're probably right. Yeah. Um, yeah this is a. I'm kind of excited for this, and I realize I'm like the only one. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a complete dud. I mean, it's also coming from NetEase, which doesn't give me a lot of confidence in it either. Typically, a mobile developer, um, and so you know, I'm I'm not a big fan of NetEase or mobile games in general. The fact that this is coming from one of the biggest mobile developers gives me a little bit of pause, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's I don't know, like what a what a waste of time, money, and effort this is going to be, like. You'd think they'd have learned something from Avengers, and they didn't. Like yeah. that's not. This is like people do not want online microtransaction laden Marvel games. That is not. Is this what actually? Wants. I don't know. Is this going to be free to play? I don't know. I would assume. I would assume not. I would assume. You're oh really? Pay, I, I assume you're going to pay seventy bucks for this. And oh then really? Have to pay for skins and all the other kind of oh, stuff on top. That, of that would be that would be a big mistake. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, you know, the Marvel license ain't free. Yeah. I have no doubt that that is going to be what's happening here. You're right, because of the license. I think Pactor said that like Marvel takes like thirty percent cut or yeah, something. That's a big cut. It, yeah. The only the only um online kind of like transaction driven game you could get away with is if you resurrected Marvel Heroes. Yeah. The Diablo style. Yeah, a lot of people seem to like that. That that the yeah, Disney killed that in its cradle or kind of too early partly because Marvel com, Marvel Entertainment run by Ike Perlmutter, uh the enemy of all people who love Marvel. Um who uh, also is involved in the current t- today the voting to see if N- N- Peltz and his and Ike and all those worthless pieces of shit uh, get to take over Disney's board. Oh, um, oh which, I saw which that. Which would yeah. be catastrophic. It really would be to yeah. all culture, right? All pop culture would suffer from that. Luckily, so what? Well, last I checked, the board is the board. Uh, um, um, Iger and then then the the normal people are winning the oh. vote. Well, I think that's good um, at least. Peltz, by the way, his only contribution to film or television has been to force M. Night Shyamalan to cast his daughter as Katara in the in the last Airbender. <laughs> That's movie. very specific. So if you want that guy running Disney, like I don't know what to tell you, but you're definitely not going to be allowed in my house. Um, it's it's yeah. uh, it's ridiculous. But like, yeah, like Marvel Heroes was largely killed. Uh, no one really knows why, but the speculation is that. Because they had a license for Marvel stuff that predated the separation of all the licenses um, after the MCU got big and Marvel started being bitter about the fact that they didn't have the other licenses for Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and X-Men. Uh, but Gazillion was the one who did that? Was that mm-hmm. right? I think so. They yeah. had Their license covered everything because oh. that, was the, that, that schism didn't really exist yet when right. they... When they Signed the deal, yep. so they could use Fantastic Four and X Men stuff as much as they wanted. And apparently, every time they did that, especially Fantastic Four, Marvel got real mad. Yeah, uh, but they couldn't do anything about it. So when the time to renew so or not your re- relationship, yeah. when the time to renew or not renew the license came up, they just killed it. Even yeah. though it was doing well, and it just launched on PlayStation. Um, that sucks. And I'm that I I don't haven't played a lot of online games in my time, but I missed that game to this day. Yeah, um, that was a lot of fun by the Diablo two guy. A lot of Diablo two veterans made that, and it was great. Well, um, Marvel this Rivals is not right now. going to hit at all. I think it's only announced for PC right now. That doesn't surprise me. I'm yeah. sure it'll be on the console. Eventually it'll There's be. There's no way. Marvel would never sign on if it wasn't also going to be on consoles. Like, they know where their audience is, but their audience is not going to care about this. They want, honestly, they want stuff more like the Captain America Black Panther game. Yeah. Except, and Spider-Man 2. Except yeah. set in the modern day with, uh, uh, you know, more characters yeah. that they, you know, resonate with I, I think they'd rather people would rather play you know t'challa than his grandfather yeah. for the most part yeah um or just in general the characters that they know um in an action-based setting that uh, isn't like an arbitrary contest between i mean i know marvel characters fight each other all the time but it's like 
the the reason Marvel is successful is the stories, is the the characters yeah, and the course. stories and their interaction with each other, and that's not going to be portrayed okay, because we know that because the only character you got out of Overwatch was when they did the CG movies. Yeah, which by the way was the best thing about Overwatch for the. Uh, in the well, end. now they're saying they're not going to do the single player story driven no, stuff, which was the whole reason too. Overwatch two launched. Yeah. <laughs> It's hilarious. There, there's going to be a reckoning. I look, for, I look forward to the, uh, the, the 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 Dwyer documentary about uh, the the mishandling and failure of Overwatch. I don't I don't know if there's a more fumbled bag <laughs> in the history of video games. Yeah, it seemed like it was set on a path to That's eternal success. Unbelievable. Yeah, like to, to, from the point of like that. You know, 2018, you couldn't look on gaming internet anywhere and not see overwatch something shit or overwatch yeah. it was just everywhere it was the, the one and now big, it's and now like people like people don't even know it still exists i know yeah let's see what you guys are saying about uh this new marvel game um or just marvel in general um fire native said matt what's so sad i think is there is infinite lore from comics in the mcu to make a single player story game and they don't yeah, well, any... i think a lot of it is just it's a lot of work <laughs> like those yeah. games take you know Three or four years, they cost two hundred million dollars. So do these, though. And yeah, and, I mean, with the license, maybe. And at least when you're done making the single player game, you get your sales, and you don't have to worry about it again. As opposed to supporting these, these live service games until the end of the fucking world, like it's so weird. And 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 people and the, the other problem is like people have like kind of gotten into that mentality with everything now. Like everyone's going around reporting that the the Pal World's player base has dropped ninety seven percent since launch yeah it's a single player game yeah like it should of course, of course. Like, that's how Who it cares? works yeah. like, it they made they sold that like has nothing million. to do with the health of the game <laughs> they've got their money like, it's, it's different it's, now it's, the, yeah. the the expectations are so different for yeah. what makes a game successful that's also a recent factor factor question like what makes a game successful now mm -hmm. like it's different than it used to be yeah. so well, we're meanwhile, all calibrating and then meanwhile uh the big joker reveal which is one of the worst things i've ever seen um like someone on Twitter, or Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Someone on Twitter said that the, the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League Joker is like you finally let one of those theater kids who always claimed they could play the Joker better than Heath Ledger try it, oh, it's and so that's bad. what you ended up with. The voice alone um, sounds awful. Yeah. It sounds nothing like the Joker. It's bizarre. It's really um, weird. After you fumbled, talk about fumbling a bag. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> I don't. There you go. I don't mind the the visual design of him. Yeah. Um, oh, he looks fine. But the performance is yeah. awful. It's terrible. And uh, that peaked, I think, at three thousand con con concurrent <laughs> players on Steam. They, they brought them, brought it back to three thousand, and it dropped back to a thousand two days later. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hell Divers Two is still hovering around two hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. So, and then they announced that there's going to be a Arkham Origins remaster later this year. I was like, oh, so we're we're already trying to erase. <laughs> Hey, remember when you liked these? <laughs> Check it out. Look. Well, we look. We like to focus it's on. Batman. Anytime somebody chats for the first time on our stream, we like to point them out. And here we go. Here's Moncasa with their first ever chat on Game Face, and they say, "I like turtles." Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I like turtles too, actually. Oh, they think they're talking about the Ninja Turtles there. <laughs> Ninja Turtles got a Transformers crossover this week. They're making a turtle van that turns into a giant robot. Yeah. That's good. Um, X-Men. Oh, X-Men hey, Joe, thank you for Twitch Prime. X-Men 97 is a great example of taking source material from the comics. And, in fact, the source material that they're adapting for X-Men 97's new season is from 1980. Like they're doing, they're doing, they're doing X Men two hundred. X Men is currently on like issue five hundred. They're wow. they're doing X Men. They're doing the Inferno storyline stuff and the Trial of Magneto. That's like when I started reading. Mm -hmm. In, they're doing Life Death, which is the first X Men comic I ever read. Was Life Death Part One and Two, which is hilarious because I was like eight, yeah. and that's a dialogue driven romance story between Storm and Forge. And for some reason, I thought it was fucking captivating. I don't know, <laughs> and I wanted more of the X Men stuff. Um, they're yeah. doing Cyclops right for the first time ever in non-comic media. Like they they remember that his his beams are actually concussive blasts, so he's using them and not lasers. Yeah, yeah. and they're using so he's using them like he hits somebody and uses it to push himself backwards to dodge something that's incoming. Right, so right. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And that that so that show is like yeah like that and it's the most the big one of the big I think the biggest streaming premiere of the year across all streaming services this year so wow. far. So great. like. If you make it good, people will we'll watch come. it. Yeah. Even if there's a bunch of dipshits online complaining that the X-Men are woke, because guess what? They've always been that. Yeah. Like, that's the whole point. That's what it is. That's what they are, yeah. If you're whining about that, congratulations. You've become the bad guys in the X-Men. <laughs> Great job. Uh, also, thank you to Henry Pumpkins for Twitch Prime. That's awesome. The Legacy says, um, 
Moncasa is referencing a viral news report video. Okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> mm. Viral news report. What? Well, okay. A news report video that went viral. Um, apparently someone said they like turtles. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't seen that one. Yep. Uh, okay, let's move on. Yeah. Next, we're going to talk. yes, Gambit does wear a halter top. It's almost like, you know, what? Like, people are very angry that Gambit wore a halter top in the new the new season. It's, it's like a cut-off pink yeah. shirt. And it's like, yeah, it takes place in 1997. Have yeah. you ever have you ever seen movie? Bill, no, Pre- Bill S. Preston Esquire wore a shirt like that. <laughs> Everybody wore that shirt. If, if you had any kind of abs and you were yeah. a dude, you wore the, the cut-off shirt. Like, every, I knew... Everyone I knew named Travis wore that shirt in the yep. fucking eighties and nineties. I don't know where people get this weird idea. And they're all kids because they all, weren't there. They all people. They weren't there. Yeah, they're all people <laughs> that are too why. young to remember it. It's yeah. like the, it's like the the kids that are like saying that like, well, no one hated the Star Wars prequels back in the day, and everyone hates the sequels. And I'm like, are what? Were you like five? <laughs> is that the only the only explanation I have for that is that you are you were too young to use the internet right. when that there are literal movies made about how George Lucas ruined everyone's childhood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which was ridiculous then, and it's ridiculous now. Yeah. And in 15 years, when everyone is... It's just conventional wisdom, The Last Jedi is the best Star Wars movie. I look forward to all these guys in the nursing homes losing their minds over and over and <laughs> over about it. Okay, let's move on. We're going to talk next about a game that I've been tracking real close. In fact, I think it was like 7th in our video game power rankings for last month. And that is a game called Judas. Judas is basically the spiritual successor to Bioshock. <laughs> Solid Easter game. Yeah. Reveal. Ken yeah. Levine has been working on this game for almost a decade now, and he tries to push back on the Bioshock in space tagline that this game has kind of been stuck with, but now we got previews of this yeah, game this week. You're probably just going to have to live with that one, Ken. And in fact, it is Bioshock set in space. That's exactly what the game is. There's nothing um, wrong with that. No, not at all. It, but it, and here's the thing. It is not technically connected to Bioshock no, in any not. way, shape, or form. Matt, the weirdest thing about this round of previews that came out this week, everything else was great. Like, we're going to get to the details on the game, and it sounds awesome. But, like, Jeff Keeley was there. So IGN goes to interview Ken Levine, Mm -hmm. and they're sitting at a table with Ken, and at the table with them is Jeff Keighley. Dude, what the fuck? Like, as part of their team? Like, he's like Ken Levine's PR person or something? I have no idea. And, like, IGN is forced to acknowledge that he's sitting there, so they're like, oh, here's Jeff. And the only reason they say that he's there is because they debuted Judas on the Game Awards. What the hell? Uh, Matt, I don't know what's going on there, man. It was some weird, weird stuff. Watching, like, Ryan McCaffrey, is that his last name? I think so. From yeah. IGN? Sit there and be like, what the hell? Why are you here? Yeah, especially because, like, we all know each other. And it's like, yeah. Jeff, what are you doing? Why what? are you in our interview? Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. So anyway, once you get past the awkwardness of Keeley being there for no freaking reason, again, I don't know why, you start learning about the game, and the game sounds freaking awesome. So it starts with you being reprinted. You've been dead for a while now, and you've just been revived. And as it turns out, you are on a ship called... The uh, you are on a ship from Earth going to a planet called Proxima Centauri because Earth has been ravaged by a plague, mm. and your ship appropriately is called the Mayflower. Although some would say not appropriately after we've, what we found out ultimately about the Mayflower, um, and basically I don't know what I'm watching here it seems pretty appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> um, and basically your objective is to make it to that planet and save the human race, but. The vast majority of the game takes place on the ship. And the problem is that most of the people on the ship are not humans. They are robots, but they do not know that they are robots. You're the jerk that tells them that they're robots. And so they're like, F you, and they turn on you. And that's the setup for the game. You're basically on this ship trying to get to this planet to save planet Earth. But on the ship, you have a bunch of insane robots that are trying to kill you. And that's pretty much the plot. Now, they've talked about the narrative Legos thing. Narrative Lego. I guess the plural of Legos is actually Lego. Yeah. Um, and They are Lego bricks, not yeah, Legos. Right. So, anyway, he's talked about how the narrative is set up. And basically, all that they got out of him throughout these previews is like, well, if you do something for... So, basically, there's three main 
characters that you work for in the game. And they're actually like they're a they're a husband and wife, and then they have a daughter that's like an android. And so you're basically doing work for them. But the thing is, is if you pay too much attention to one of them and ignore the others, it has consequences on down the road. So one wow. of the things Sure F says when I joined the game Westworld was not out yet. Wow. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that is a long time ago. Are people saying it's like Westworld? No, they're just making comparisons to like I mean it's it's hardly original in terms of like you know the wide you know there's there's Westworld to this there's uh, um, there's obviously Bioshock and System Shock to it there's uh, yeah I mean Shora worked on this game yeah we should like there's uh, zoom him into the show tricks to this <laughs> sense of identity there's Ex Machina here I mean you know uh-huh. it's borrowing a lot of stuff from a lot of different sci-fi yeah, properties for sure so, I mean all Ken Levine's stuff has always done that yeah no, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you make it your own yeah. Um, so anyway, that's the whole setup. And then again, so how the narrative Lego works is if you are helping one of those three people, they will come and show up during fights with the robots and help you. They, and then they gave another example where if you weren't paying enough attention to one of the other people, they will like, if you're running away from an enemy, they will like shut a door on you so you can't get away from the enemy. So those are the two examples that he shared of how that stuff is going to work. I'm not 100% convinced on all that stuff. We'll see. We've heard stuff about that with so many different games at this point, Matt. Um, much like Bioshock, mm -hmm. you have a gun in your right hand. You have your elemental abilities, elixirs, as they're called in Bioshock, in your left hand. Um, and they do all the typical stuff. So if you're trying to use electricity and there's a puddle of water, you can shock the puddle. And if there's enemies standing, standing in the puddle, it'll shock them. Again, a lot of stuff that we've seen, and we actually saw that in uh, Dead Rising 2, it was, or um, Dead Island 2. Mm -hmm. They even had stuff like that. So even that's not like bleeding edge like tech anymore. Um, yeah, Bioshock 1 did that. Yeah. So. And then there's other elements of the game where you can like hack the robots on the ship and you can make them passive or aggressive and try to help you in combat. Um, and then like a lot of the enemies in the game, because all the robots were supposed to be perceived as humans, they were actually like the, the ship doctor or the ship dentist or the ship lawyer or whatever. Those are like the bosses that you fight in the game. The ro these robots who were supposed to take over human roles, mm -hmm. who you expose. I mean, that's also Bioshock. You're fighting like the heads of the communities yeah. in that game as well. Like, yep. I mean, more in a Randian sort of like, you know. But like, again, every every major boss in, in Bioshock is a community leader, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like similar here. Very similar. Yep. Um, and then the final thing that, that Ken Levine shared throughout his interviews and these previews is that there are also some roguelike elements in the game. He didn't go into a lot of detail about that. That sure pissed people off. Yeah. It'll be interesting really to see how that's... I mean, I'm, I take roguelike stuff as a case-by-case you know, -case basis because... It's not something that particularly interests me, but it's also not something that, like, is a deal killer. Like, yeah. there's ways to implement that, that, you know, like, Returnal is great. Hades is great. There's a bunch of rogues, rogues that, are not. that are not great. <laughs> you know? yep. Yeah, I hear you. Or, like, the God of War, God of War's uh, DLC for that. Like, the first game's got it. Yeah, that, I like that. Mm -hmm. That was good. Like, yeah. There's ways to do it. Sure. Yeah. Definitely there's ways to do it that'll make the vast majority of people enjoy it. So we'll see if Ken can figure that out. But that's all the information we have on Judas at this point. We also still don't have a release date. I think it's this year. He didn't say anything in the previews or the interviews. He wouldn't hint at it. No, so no. so it, we still it, don't know. If they started it before Westworld started airing, I would hope it'd be ready <laughs> pretty soon. Well, I remember Shora talking about it in our chat. Yeah. Like, he didn't give specifics or anything, but he shared, you know, I'm working yeah. at that studio, like, but years ago. there anymore. Yeah, but... yeah. And that was years ago. Yeah. So... It's been under development for a while. It shouldn't be that much longer until it comes out. Um, I might be a little bit surprised if it comes out this year because we still haven't seen like a real chunk of gameplay yet. Uh, all we have is a couple trailers of the game so far and some words from Ken. Mm. Uh, Vincent says, GameSpot's previewer said there's no way it comes out this year. Okay. So there you go. I wasn't very confident it would have come out this year either. No, that's not, I don't think we didn't draft this no. one for anything it'd nope be, yeah i wouldn't no we so. knew better i wouldn't have. yeah i definitely wouldn't even though i would love to have this on my team hopefully i can get it next year um but anyway there you go that's the latest on the spiritual successor to bioshock judas next up we got some information from i can't i don't even know where this came from i think from someone in western europe or something like that but this week on the internet some very grainy almost like blackberry size photographs appeared mm -hmm. of the new digital only xbox series x 
We're not even going to run them here on the show because literally they were the photos are like the size of a postage stamp. If you blow them up, you can hardly even see what they are. If you but, look in the background, Bigfoot. Is yeah. <laughs> but the the digital only Xbox Series X is white. Um, and they haven't really done much to it. The disk drive obviously is gone because it's digital only. Still shaped exactly the same. It's just white. They did tweak some of the stuff inside. Like the heat sink is a little different inside. Mm -hmm. um, they did some stuff like that. But otherwise, it's the same thing. I imagine you just you expand out into the space that was the disk drive to add more heat sink. Probably. Would be, would be what I'd do there. Matt, I actually have a terrible story to tell about the heat that comes out of the Xbox Series X. So last week... It really does spit some fire it's insane. Top of it. it is insane so i was in the back room recording footage for game face last week and my wife is like hey dinner's done or whatever and so i just hit pause and i put my uh, elite series 2 controller on top of the xbox series x oh no but it was paused and like i put it to sleep it's still on. no it's oh, still, Matt. it still puts heat out oh, Matt. it's so Matt. crazy it ruined my controller it mm. melted so I didn't even realize it, but the whole bottom of that controller is rubber. Yeah. And it melted mm -hmm. all the rubber on the bottom of the Lucky controller. It didn't drip into the system. It didn't turn it to liquid. Mm -hmm. It kind of liquefied it, so it pulled away from the controller. So, Justin Horman, that controller that you bought me a couple years ago is now ruined, unfortunately. I still play with it, but it's like the rubber on the bottom is like all bubbled and like peeling away from the controller now. Mm. Because it sat there for 30 minutes on top of the Xbox Series X. That's how hot the air is coming out of that thing. So I learned a valuable lesson. Like, because I do that with my PS5 as well. Like, I'll have it standing vertically. And when I pause, I set the controller on top of it. So it just kind of just rests on top of it and just kind of sits there and sways. So I just like, oh, I'll just put my controller on top of the Series X. Oh, no. That was a oh, huge you mistake. Never, you never block a vent. Well, I also noticed on PS5, if you're playing certain games, like, I have to constantly take the cables out. Take it back to back to capture, plug them in, take them out, take it back. Those cables get almost mushy from the heat of the PlayStation 5 mm -hmm. if you play it for a while. I think that's partly where some of them have the problem with the LAN cable thing. Maybe. I think that I think that port gets a little distorted, distended. It's so hot. Like the, you can like bend like the mm -hmm. HDMI cable like in half, like no problem. Like mm -hmm. these things are making crazy, crazy heat. So anyway, if pro I, tip, if don't if set I, your controller on top of your Xbox Series X. If I have the Series X on, the room is warmer. Oh, yeah. If it's a cold Oh, it'll day. heat your room. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and so, anyway, back to the digital-only Xbox Series X. Do you think there's going to be a market for this thing? Because I didn't feel like there's a market for any Xbox hardware right now. I saw a figure yesterday. It's down 47% in Europe right know. now. I mean, is it going to be cheaper? That's the only thing I would say it would be. It should be. Use. Yeah, I mean, probably 50 bucks would be my guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, not much. I, I don't see it moving the needle. At all. I mean, it feels like rearranging the deck chairs, on, uh, on at least on the Lusitania, if not yeah. the Titanic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the one thing that we do now know is that it's real. So it was kind of a rumor before, and I, well, I Phil didn't deny it or whatever when the rumors came out. So we kind of knew yeah. it was real. But now we know for 100% it's real. There are photos out there of it. And again, it looks exactly like the Xbox Series X. Instead of being like dark gray black, it's just white. And there's no disk drive on the front. So... My guess is we'll probably get an announcement of that at Summer Games Fest. Sure. That'd be my guess. But and we'll see what the pricing is. I wouldn't guess it would be more than $50 cheaper, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, we've been talking a lot about Embracer on Game Face for the last year and a half, mostly in, in an angry and hateful way because they've been laying off so many people. They bought up a bunch of studios, thought they were going to be able to flip them and make a profit. That didn't work out. So now they've had to lay off a bunch of people, cancel a bunch of games, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the final chapter has finally been written in the Embracer saga, and it ends with Embracer selling Gearbox and Borderlands to take two for four hundred and sixty million dollars. Um, how do you feel about that, Matt? Sure, I mean, I, that, that's a crazy <laughs> price uh, for that. I think it's less than half what they paid for it like a year ago. Yeah, um, but you know, you got a fire sale when you're in the position embracers they just need money of any amount and that'll keep them alive a little longer i guess also very telling that they would make that sale for that amount of money that low a price um right before the borderlands movie comes out this year because that could really make that property more valuable yeah um if it hits yeah so, i mean I take two got a great deal yeah i mean it got it for less than half of what and everybody, Embracer just paid. everybody at Gearbox gets to keep their job, and uh, Embracer gets fucked, so cool. Yeah. All right. 
Um, and also, by the way, Borderlands 4 sounds like it's a lot further along than people think. So mm-hmm. they also sold a studio that was coming down the home stretch of its next game. So there's value there as well. It's not like take two bottom. Now they're going to have to wait six years for the new Borderlands to come out. No, so it's, it's going to be right there. It's it's what a bunch it worked of, out. What a bunch of idiots. What, Who? What a, what a, Which one? Embracer. <laughs> what, a, what a waste of everybody's time. Like. All uh, trying Gearbox to flip and it and make a quick Gearbox and two Ks and Randy's and every it's just like what the hell were you idiots thinking? Trying to make a when quick buck. Try and make, I mean, I know they were trying to turn the thing around and sell Embracer off for billions of dollars to somebody, but it's just like what would what it's uh, it's crazy. Honestly. I mean, they named the company Embracer. Of course, they, what, what did you think their plan was? Well, you figure it'd be to embrace yeah. the industry. <laughs> no, it's because they're, they're embracing all the different things. I mean, they yeah. might as well have named it Amoeba. Yeah. Like, that's what it means. Well, here's the thing. So this is it. According to Embracer, that's it. It is now done with its selling. It's now done with its layoffs. It's now done with its game cancellations. That's it. It's finished. So. And now it's going to sit there and do what? release games i guess will it i mean i'll be honest like you know some of the games that have been canceled like some of them we got like trailers for them after they were canceled like none of them looked all that great no. like i mean like time splitters i saw some footage from that it looked terrible no time i mean time splitters is of its day yeah and it may, might be time to acknowledge that like it's over it's fine yeah but like you know maybe we could use we could use some time splitters night dive quality remakes like yeah. dark forces but do we need a new time splitters game no we do probably not, not. Yeah. we definitely do not um, um so some of the stuff like i kind of understood where embracer was coming from but the layoffs and some of these some of them i don't at all no like, i mean they were just going for, insane they're going for a shotgun approach mm-hmm. originally you know, it's like well we're gonna put anything you can think of out we're gonna buy a lord of the rings we're gonna call this all you know we're gonna, by, they bought THQ Nordic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, THQ Nordic. That was almost the company that was doing what Embracer was doing on a smaller scale, and they were putting out really good quality stuff. Like eh. there was some. I mean, not like amazing. Remember the last Saints Row? Oh well, yeah, but that was that Embracer. Well, it was THQ Nordic. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I'm talking about like making new expansions to Titan Quest. Oh yeah, yeah, stuff like, like that made sense. Bringing yeah. Darksiders back, mm-hmm. uh, even though that didn't work out tremendously well. But I appreciate the thought, the effort. Yeah. Um, one day someone might make that sequel to Darksiders One that follows up on that ending. <laughs> from what was that? Twelve years ago? Yeah. Now? No, it was that was 2008, wasn't it? Yeah. So that was 16 years wow. ago. It's been 16 That's years crazy. of a cliffhanger on the end of that game. It's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, I guess the good news here, ultimately, is that Embracer isn't going to lay any more people off or cancel any more more games Maybe. for I mean, the foreseeable until, future. Until, next until it time. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much until it does. Is but at least it is officially said that now all the cuts are over. And I do feel a little bet better for the people who are working under that umbrella, who are who have basically, for the last like year, have been waiting to get mm. laid off. That is a horrible feeling, knowing yeah. that, that like, said, layoffs keep, are coming. Keep looking. Yeah, like I would, yeah. I would stick her. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would, sit back. I'd be like, okay, I got a paycheck now for a few more months. Then I can now get paid while I look while for I look a new for job. Yes, <laughs> That's that which would... is a big deal. Um. So anyway, it appears that the Embracer saga is mostly over. We'll see if the, if it actually sticks to its word or if it's just a bunch of BS. But um, at least most of the people working under that conglomerate now can breathe at least a vague sigh of relief, um, knowing that they have at least a few months here of a grace period to try to figure out what they want to do next. So anyway. Gearbox and Borderlands to take two makes sense. Like that's kind of sure. where it should have been all along. Let's be honest. Um, and they got it for a really, really cheap price. So good on take two. Um, a lot of other publishers could have snatched them up, but somehow take two got them. I'm sure Gearbox is like, we've worked with you guys before. Like, let's see if we can make something happen. And there it is. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, next up, we just got some information. Um, well, not some information. We got a trailer that Diablo 4 is finally available on Game Pass. Matt, is this going to move the needle? No. <laughs> you don't think so? It's too old. You think it's too old at this point? Yeah. Because they're just now like getting to their second season. Yeah. and Anybody who really wanted this game has it. But don't a lot of fans of Diablo actually care about the end game more than like playing through the campaign yeah but they already own the game why do they care yeah. if it's on game pass yeah you don't think some maybe some people waited no because we knew that this was going to happen when diablo came out like microsoft had already either purchased them or it was gonna we knew it was basically a done deal we knew right? it might happen but there was yeah. no guarantee i no one who really cared about diablo 4 was just I was gonna like, wait. No, i'm gonna wait until we hit the game pass <laughs> three years from now i like, guess not a thing that happened yeah 
you're getting incidental people that didn't even play it yet. It's no. Yeah. This is. I mean, it, you got to do it. It makes sense to do it, but like, it's that's. Not well, this is a milestone. I mean, this is the first game from Activision Blizzard from that acquisition to go on Game Pass. Oh yeah. Um, so it means it'll matter something, to like, it'll but it'll matter to future it. Blizzard stuff. But like, this is uh, Diablo Four is an old game unless you're still playing it, and if you're still playing it, you don't need it on Game Pass. Yeah. Um. I mean, what did it sell? Like 15, 10, 15 million, something like that, if I remember, I remember. correctly. It, it did fine. Yeah. I mean, it's all great, yeah. for sure. Um, and I'm just wondering if there is a market left, is what I'm getting at, like for people who haven't bought it yet that might want to. I wanna... would think not. Yeah. And so not to the, any great degree. I'm sure people there are people who like will try it out of curiosity or whatever mm-hmm. that already have Game Pass or whatever. But I wonder like... if there's any of you guys in our chat who um, maybe passed on Diablo 4 and maybe now might consider Game Pass now that you know you can play it for free. Well, yeah, I know you guys hate when we say free, but you can play it on Game Pass with your measly subscription for each month instead of paying buying the game for full price um and morton joe says i waited oh there's one uh only because i had backlog games and i was playing d2 remastered on switch okay so there's a couple out there maybe um link so good says diablo 4 was a bomb no one talks about it like three i don't know about that yeah, man it was diablo 4 a bomb oh uh, was diablo 4 a bomb there's no question mark there um no one talks about it no i mean it sold no very very it well sold fine i, I mean, don't know I, if the end game is as popular as it usually is I but mean, their their decisions uh, moving forward have been questionable in terms of i mean i don't i've i played through it and stopped i don't yeah i mean i played the campaign it was like 40 hours yeah. like that's enough like that's plenty of time for me to play an isometric action rpg that's more than enough um Cantana says the problem with Diablo 4 is that last epoch is out and is vastly superior. And then we got Path of Exile 2 in the near future. Diablo has name power, but no staying power. I mean, again, it sold like 14 million copies. Like, it, it's not a problem. That's no. that's a good problem to have. Like, last epoch, I think you're on an island there saying it's better than Diablo. I heard a couple people talking about it. It definitely got some buzz and some word of mouth. But I didn't see too many people that said it was better than Diablo 4, at least in my anecdotal life no i mean i've seen people say like the way they're doing some things the, the, like the kind of the online and the the the, the 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 roadmap is better than diablo 4 but in terms mm-hmm. of being a better game i haven't heard that too much yeah me either but i did hear good things i about have it. last epoch but i have not actually played it yeah so. um i haven't played it either j force uh, jj Forcebreaker says there's still a lot of time wasted an ip stuck in the limbo freezer with every passing year less and less players recognize remember that series will be harder to bring back. I don't know what he's talking about. Time splitters, maybe? Deus Ex. He's replying to Vincent. Oh, Deus someone Ex. brought up Deus Ex. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, Case Money says it sold a ton, but I don't think it has the same longevity as three. I don't know. I, again, I'm not the person who sticks around and plays this for like four yeah, years I, afterwards. I can't identify with people who played Diablo 3 for 10 years either, so I don't yeah. I don't know what to tell you. And also, Diablo 3, people whined about it for the first That's two, true. three years of his existence. That's true. So, so I, you know, who knows? <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, Rigor Mortis UK says he also he or she also waited, and he'll, he or she will give it a go now. So there's a few. Um, I don't know if it's going to bring back like a resurgence to game pass or anything like that so also like how many people yeah this seems more like something where if i never got around to playing diablo 4 and i have a game pass subscription already so i will try it now that doesn't actually help microsoft really yeah yeah i don't know if any of this is gonna this this if diablo 4 is gonna help microsoft at all i just don't see it happening i think it's just an obvious step it's a nice feather in the cap yeah it's like okay here we go like here's our first activision blizzard game that's on game pass and it's a signal that in the future you can probably count on that Mm -hmm. for future blizzard games that's fine and hopefully much more quickly than the amount of time it took for this one to appear (laughs) we'll see how that goes but i mean we're coming up on a year of the merger and we're going to finally start seeing the restructuring you know finish up and then settle out into what they plan to do with all these properties and where they plan to put things it's it's you're gonna see that more and more going into the summer i think yep um, and then, moving on, <laughs> we we have a Hollow Knight Silk Song sighting. We need, we need some kind of a special audio thing that we can play whenever we hear something about Hollow Knight Silk Song, because it's just like this game has almost turned into like an urban legend at this point. Um, but yesterday, and this is what threw people into a tizzy on April Fool's, yesterday, a game page appeared for Hollow Knight Silk Song on the official Xbox website. Also, it got an ESRB rating yesterday, which usually means that a game is pretty much finished if they've sent it mm-hmm. to the ESRB to be rated. 
So people are flipping out. They're like, finally, we're getting Hollow Knight Silk Song. We're going to get an announcement here in the next like couple weeks or something like that. And it's going to come out this year. What say you, Matt Kyle? Uh, a couple weeks seems optimistic. Yeah. But it's a good sign. Yeah. I'll it, believe it when I see it. It indicates that you could probably you could probably see it released by this in the summer at some point yeah if they're, if they're raining at this point even though it's supposed to come out last summer on game pass yeah. hell <laughs> shadow drop it during your non-e3 press conference that would be huge yeah um so anyway it looks like there's a ray of light for those of you who drafted hollow knight on your video game fantasy teams i'm one of them by the way so i'm hoping against all other information and data that this actually makes it out this year uh, we'll see, but we do have at least a glimmer of hope now that Xbox has come alive and started working on some future promotion for the game. And then our last topic in today's housekeeping is Ubisoft, which has struggled mightily to solve the games-as-a-service conundrum. It has tried with several different games. It has failed miserably in almost all of them except for Rainbow Six Siege, which kind of came out of nowhere. I don't think anyone yeah, that expected that. was kind of accident. It was before they were trying. That was almost like a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out. Um, like and the, their live service history since then seems to almost be them like wondering how they did that. Yeah. Well, the crazy part about it is like the game that we're seeing right now, this game is called X Defiant. And we talked about this on Game Face like a year. Yeah. And... Like I, every time I forget about this game, somebody has to bring it up again. And then I get don't get that part of my brain back anymore. Well, it's, it's actually good is what I was getting at. Mm-hmm. I was in the beta for this and I really enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun playing this game. Um, it is supposed to be like a Tom Clancy hero shooter. It has like elements from a bunch of different Tom Clancy shooters all rolled into one free to play shooter. I actually had a ton of fun with it, but after that beta like a year ago, it just disappeared. And now Ubisoft has reappeared with the game, and it's like, oh, no, we're reworking it again. Mm-hmm. And it's going to go into beta again. A year later, it's going to have another beta. Like, I you mean, it does. maybe name it something that isn't stupid. Right. That might help. Like, you might as well just call it, like, Tom Clancy Hero Shooter. That might actually make it yeah. more successful. <laughs> like, get Tom Clancy into the name Just somehow. call it Tom Clancy's Kill People and right. call it a day. <laughs> like, what do you mean? You're right. I mean, that would work better than X Defiant. That's for damn sure. Every time you say X Defiant, I have to remind myself what it is. Right. I was like, wait, what was that? It's not the rollerblading one, is it? No. Yeah. It's not the pirate one. I played that one. No one talks about it anymore after a week after it came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, this was the, the Tom Clancy multiverse thing that I expects mean, you to know what End War was. Sure. I mean, I'll be honest. This is the closest that another game has come to Call of Duty. And that may not work out because you can't out Call of Duty Call of Duty. But this game felt really good to play. I liked the maps. Um, I had a lot of fun with it when I played the beta. And so I was surprised that it didn't, it wasn't released ultimately. And here we are a year later. And... I think what this shows, though, look, even with Ubisoft's, all the talent there, all the money there, it still can't solve this problem. It can't figure it out. It shows you how hard it is to create a game as a service that hits. I mean, PlayStation... You gotta gotta jazz it up, color it up, add some extra, like, you know, some extra verb to it called Tom Clancy's fancy prancy magic dancy and uh, throw in some foam stars. uh, (laughs) I don't know about that, but... (laughs) But anyway, if you've been waiting for X Defiant, and I don't know why you would be at this point, most people I think just assumed it was canceled. Because again, I haven't thought about it since the last time we you talked about. It. It. I think a lot of people feel that way. It's still in development. They're still working on it. God knows when it's actually going to come out. So there you go. Again, I think PlayStation's learning this too. It's not as easy as you think. Because no. the other problem too is there's so much competition now. Like I really want to know what's going on internally at PlayStation after Helldivers Two hit right. so big. I mean, they may because go all in now. Because there's no possible way they thought Helldivers Two was going to be the one that did. No, that. It, 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 it. PlayStation has already admitted it had no. Even the developers of that oh, game the developers are like, have no idea. and by the way, they're clueless. They're like, what? I don't know if you've been keeping. I haven't been playing it much, but I've been keeping I up on, on the it. updates and how they're what they're doing with it. Mm-hmm. The way they are handling the way they're updating that game is genius which is funny because they had no plan no but have you seen what they're doing in terms like i mean i saw that there's like a it was kind of like um what happened in dragon's dogma isn't there like a sickness that's like going through the game or something no it's so the early they've added some stuff so they're like they added like flying bugs at Mm -hmm. one point and people were posting screenshots and videos of them and the developers including the ceo of the company were online saying that's all fake 
like you're 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 that's pro bug pro- propaganda and don't believe any of that. and like people are like i have footage i was like no you doctored that for like they're comp- uh. they're, ba- they're basically being <laughs> in universe like the the, the right. no, that's not true you, there's no such thing as a flying bug yeah, yeah. and then like one of the developers joined a game with like normal players uh, a couple weeks ago and called in an airdrop that dropped in this giant like APC tank vehicle no one had ever seen before, uh-huh. where everybody can get in it and run turrets. And yeah, like, yeah. It's like it's like all it just runs over shit. And he just like it's any any like drops it down. And he goes, oh, I gotta go back to work. You guys have fun with the vehicle. And like that's it. All of a sudden, <laughs> the the mechs that's got clever. put in the game, and they're just out there. So you have to find the plans for the mechs, and they didn't say what planets they're on, so people yeah. are just looking for them. Uh-huh. There's a third faction coming in, which there's a third faction that showed up eventually in the first game, and they use blue lasers, and they are in, what it is believed, they are in cloaked ships above certain planets, and every once in a while, during a big firefight, someone will get killed by blue lasers fired from way too high to be, and it's, it's, it's like an air, orbital, it's orbital laser. strikes from the, new, the third <laughs> faction that hasn't been revealed Clever. yet, yeah. and like, they just, they're like, we're not going to give you a roadmap because... You're just gonna. We find didn't out have what one. <laughs> well, they don't have one. But also, there wasn't a roadmap for the first game because, like, they uh, just wanted to surprise you. Yeah, yeah. And like, clever. They've got a guy whose whole like his full time job is just to fuck with the players by messing with the gears uh-huh. behind the scenes, flipping the like, switches. They're basically playing it as a game they're playing against the player base, and it's really, really working. That's cool. Um, I haven't played it since the week we talked about it. I have no. Neither have I, it. but like I've kept up on the on the updates and kind of all you know, it's the kind of the way I do with it when something interesting happens in the Eve Online. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way they're doing this is is correct. Like they they have turned it into almost an ARG for wow. people, and it's it's brilliant. It's clever. Yeah, got to do stuff like that in twenty twenty four. That's the answer. Yeah. How do you make a game as a service? Click stuff yeah. like that. Do that. Like yeah. give 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 people a reason to jump in every day because they might see something crazy, unexpected. They don't know what yeah, they're, what's going to happen. What they're going to see. Yeah, that's a good you idea. might you might go to a random thing and accidentally uncover the blueprints for like the the big bipedal mech and get to use that from now on. That yeah. could be your. Like, some people have you like where you, oh I found the blueprint on this one planet. Like yeah, it's just. That's cool. Yeah. Like, that's fun. That's engaging. Feels, that feels like you're yeah. a part of something that's evolving and moving and interesting and, and unique. Yeah. And uh, I don't get that from X. X Defiant, yeah. To the <laughs> point that I, I just forgot the name of the fucking game <laughs> you, again. Yeah, yeah. Sentence there. That's like, hilarious. That's a good sign to Ubisoft. Like, you got to change the name of that game. It's that just not working. That, ain't, that game's terrible. Yeah. It, I don't, it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. So there you go. That's our housekeeping for episode 382. Before we get on to the bulk of the show, let's hear from our sponsor, L.S. Cream. L.S. Cream is a fine cream liqueur created by fellow gamer and sifter, Stevens Charles. It's inspired by an ancestral recipe from Haiti called Cray Mass and a double gold winner for its original taste at the New York Wine and Spirit International Competition. Ellis Cream can be enjoyed on the rocks or as a mixer for drinks with its rich blend of fresh cream and neutral grain spirits with notes of coconut, vanilla, cinnamon, and nutmeg. It's great in coffee or to make espresso martinis. To learn more, discover amazing drink recipes, or to track down your own bottle using a handy store locator, head to creamls.com slash sifted. That's creamls.com slash sifted. That's right, people. It's time to cray mass, dead ass, and head to creamls.com slash sifted and pick yourself up a bottle of LS Cream. Everything there at the website that you need, you can find a bottle locally at your local store. And when you go into the store... This is the bottle that you need to look for. It's very distinctive. You can't miss it when you go into the liquor store. Um, also, if you go to the website, though, you can figure out how to have it sent to you directly. In fact, if you're watching the show on YouTube right now, there's a link down below in the description that you can click that will take you directly to a place where you can punch in your zip code and get the stuff sent to you. It is incredible. It is one of my favorite liqueurs. I really wonder if I would have ever discovered it if it weren't for our sponsorship. I wouldn't have. Yeah. I'm so glad that this has worked out, that Steven Charles is a huge gamer um, that loves gaming just as much as he loves his business. So, again, go to creamls.com slash sifted. Make sure you use that URL so they can track. um, And you can go there. There's recipes to make awesome drinks. If you're having a special event, having some people over and you want to impress them. Um, Or if you just love LS Cream, you want to figure out new new ways to use it. Everything is there. Go to creamls.com slash sifted. With that... 
it's time to get on with the heart of Game Face, episode 382. We're going to kick things off with Rise of the Ronin, which is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. And after that, we're going to talk about another PlayStation 5 exclusive. And Matt, normally, when I look at a rundown for our show and I see too many exclusives for one platform, it makes me uneasy because we have people who watch the show that maybe they only own a Switch or maybe they only own an Xbox or whatever. I try to make the show and stack the show in a way that it will appeal to everybody. But Matt, I had an epiphany this morning when I looked at this rundown and I was like, oh no, I'm like, we have two PlayStation 5 exclusives. Then I realized like, so what? It's all anybody owns. Mm -hmm. It's all that matters. Like, it's so funny. Like, if you think about some of these other podcasts or Patreons that just focus on PlayStation. And at first I was like, oh, that's very short-sighted to just focus on PlayStation. They bet and won because let's be honest, this is the stuff that really matters. The PlayStation 5 stuff. It's what most people are going to play and mm -hmm. are going to buy. So don't take this yeah, as I mean, me. I'll, I'll see you when Hellblade 2 comes out. But right. other than that, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, don't take this and as it's what like, came out. Yeah. Don't take this as me saying like, oh, we're, gonna, we're not going to we're going to cover Xbox differently going forward. We're not. I'm just saying personally in my mind, like I don't feel as bad about stacking a show that's stacked with PlayStation games anymore because it's all you guys have bought. Hardly any of you, any of you bought an Xbox. That's just the sad truth. So this show is slanted a little heavily towards PlayStation today. But again, most of you are like, cool. <laughs> like, well, also, that's the console again, I own. It's what came out. Yeah. But yeah. End well, of discussion. Like, pretty much, yeah. We all, that's also part of it. But anyway, just one, if, if some of you Like, Xbox if you're upset said, it's all PlayStation exclusives, go yell at Nintendo and Microsoft for not putting anything else yeah, out Yeah, we week. can't like, force them to release games yeah. for the other platforms. So we're doing the best we can here to make sure we make a show for everybody. Though. I just want you guys to know that. So today, we're going to talk about Rise of the Ronin. It is an open-world action RPG developed by Team Ninja of Ninja Gaiden fame. Although, do you think most people know him for, for like, Neo now? I don't think most people know them, period. At all? <laughs> we people do. people who made Ninja Gaiden are long gone. Yeah. I'm sure there's some people still, but like the, 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 the leaders of those teams don't seem to work there anymore. Yeah. And this game, I feel like, is evidence of that as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like a Team Ninja game, but I didn't feel like Neo really felt like a Team Ninja game either, so... No, I mean, it, it had some of their philosophy in it, but it didn't feel like Ninja Gaiden, yeah. obviously. It felt like Dark Souls by way of someone who really, really, really likes bars yeah <laughs> yeah stamina bars um in this game like it feels like every other game at this point is challenging it's not an easy game um i'm just gonna tell you right now full disclosure before we start talking about this i played the first five hours of it mm. on the medium difficulty setting and i just said f this and i put it on the easiest difficulty setting and played it the rest of the way mm. and never looked back and never gave a shit and I will do this now going forward. I don't care anymore. I don't care about the whole, like, oh, I beat it on hard. I don't care about that anymore. I want to enjoy video games. And the first five hours of play in this game was a nightmare. Just dying constantly, not able to make headway. As soon as I put it on the easier difficulty setting, and I'll let you know that that easy, easier, quote, unquote, difficulty setting, it's still harder than, like, any Assassin's Creed game ever. On, oh, the, me, easier, yeah, on the easier difficulty setting, it's still harder than Assassin's Creed. But what I'm getting at is like, that's what most people like. They like the difficulty curve of games like Assassin's Creed. I really feel like every game now is like hard as nails. And I really wonder if it's starting to hurt the industry. It's like, if you're like my uncle or one of my brothers who kind of plays video games and you only hear about the big games like uh, because they bubbled up in some way or like everyone's talking about them on social media, if you've been doing that for the last couple years, almost every one of those games has been hard as nails. So I'll, I'll counter that by saying it didn't hurt Elden Ring at all. Has it? Like, we'll see. Like, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, a Elden... lot of people bought Elden Ring. Like, my uncle bought mm -hmm. Elden Ring. He was like, what the F is this? My brother mm -hmm. bought Elden Ring. He played it for three hours and was <laughs> like, what is this? My point I'm getting at is like, why does every game have to be hard? Like... I feel like it's turning off casual people to video games because every big game now is hard. That's, like That's interesting because I have kind of the opposite response to this. Okay. Um, I think this game is incredibly stupid. 
Okay. Two, well, I won't disagree and, with that. And wait, I mean, probably different. And for probably <laughs> for the different same reasons. reasons you think that, but also different reasons. Yeah. I think this game is the most simplistic piece of shit in terms of <laughs> combat I've played in a very long time, and I don't understand what people are talking about online when they talk about how deep this thing is. All it's you need not, to do, if it's all about it's blocking not, with the they, triangle. I don't understand button. what they're That's talking it. about. It. The whole game um, is driven by blocking the, with triangle. Here's the thing. I think this game is pretty easy for the most part. I do not. Um, the thing is, the hardest thing in this entire game is the first boss fight. And really? The, Which you, one? Where you have to fight the Blade Master. Really? That's the hardest thing in the game. Because you don't have the tools fully yet, and you don't fully understand what the hell it's telling you to do. I found later bosses harder than I her. I did not. Than her. I did not. Especially once you have allies with you. That was The, the later bosses weren't much of a problem. Well, I will say this. I can, the, the only time I die in this game is when I try to... Like, usually it's when I find a fugitive, because each area has the, all this checkbox stuff you have to do all the things. Mm -hmm. And you have fugitives there, and it'll tell me that the fugitive of this certain level, and I'm like, okay, that's the level I am or a little few levels below and i'll go fight him and that fugitive can do like things that essentially break the rules of the combat as i understand it like i woke one guy up he's just sleeping in the middle of this little mm -hmm. park so I, and he was supposed to be level nine and i was level 14 and i and so i'm like okay i'm gonna stab him mm -hmm. and uh because if he's asleep i can stab him take half his health yep. off the front. and then he just did five four or five red red attacks you can't block you have to like counter or dodge That's, yeah and, but even the window for countering or dodging the red attacks is like razor oh, well, thin. So I'll, I'll get to the do I'll get to that later. That's not important right now. But what I'm saying is, you shouldn't be able to do that because the the other character, the enemies also use stamina and key to like kind of mm -hmm. like deal. With, if you wear their key down to nothing, you get to do a, a big attack on them. Yeah, um, that's kind of the whole balance of the system. Um, and Which I, is I, and like I, Sekiro. And in a I lot literally, of ways. Oh, there's a lot of Sekiro in this game yeah. from people who didn't understand why Sekiro works. Yeah. Um, but like the pro tip, uh, the fact that Sekiro has no fucking stamina bar is key to why it works. Right. That's <laughs> true. Like the problem, yeah. with, one of the problems with this game's combat system is you constantly are ending up in the situation where like I'm fighting all these guys and we're all cool. Oh, now we're tired and we have to stop for a second. It it's is like, weird. What is the point? And you're supposed to throw in, you know, like the same way that. Uh, Neo had that thing where you could throw in the 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 blade flash thing. Yeah, I have that in combo. this too. That's yeah. in this too, and you get like you can upgrade. Like I, that's one of the first things I upgraded to give me fifteen percent of my key back mm -hmm. because that's the only way I can keep sustained pressure on somebody. Yep. Because um, you're right. If you keep spamming your attacks, you get tired and you can't do anything. Yeah. You can't block. You can't attack. So I played when the, when the first before last week's show. It, you know, this obviously came out before then, and I came in and i played the you know the intro thing which is what you're seeing here mm -hmm. and you kind of you infiltrate a ship and you come back and you have to leave your you it's interesting you create two characters at the yep. beginning of this game your blade twins yeah and you can make them whoever you want you make them both women you can make them whatever whoever you want mm -hmm. complete freedom to design them decide their their weapons they start with their yep. their fighting styles whatever and you go in and you fight this thing and at the end one of you has to stay behind to let the other one escape and you choose which one becomes your main character for the whole game, and the other one will obviously become your rival for the rest of the story. Although you think they die. Yeah, but you know they don't because right. you've seen the title <laughs> screen. So yep. you didn't make me create a character. The game makes for... you think they're dead, yeah. Except it doesn't because you didn't spend 15 minutes creating a character for them to kill them <laughs> off in five minutes. Like, come on. People. I didn't even they're... create my second character. I just, cho I just well, chose I whatever I'm, they set up. I'm, I made them both very specific characters. I just created one, and then um, just the second one, I just let them pick and, uh, whatever they wanted. And also, the, if you watch the opening intro, they show a guy. Uh, what you're, 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 the, character, the default characters are fighting each other, and mm -hmm. one of them has an, a mechanical arm. So you're like, okay, he got his arm cut off and that yeah but like you go back and um and basically uh the your your ronin camp whatever gets attacked by ninjas and i don't remember why and you have to fight your way through a bunch of ninjas and you get there and you realize that the the your your blade twin is still alive and out there doing something somewhere so you want to go find them and the old lady, the blade master, is like, no one can leave the village, so you have to fight her. Which is and absurd. That fight <laughs> sucks. <laughs> yeah, it did, and I got killed. It took like, me a bunch of I times, killed like yeah. three, three or four times, and I just put it down and went back to Dragon's Dogma too. <laughs> and I came. And after we didn't talk about it on the show last week, I went back and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll try this again. And I did get through it after a couple more tries. And I have basically never had a problem with a boss ever again. Because oh, I've of, died. I died so many times in this before I changed the difficulty. I had so many. Like, I rank and file guys would kill me sometimes. I just, the camera would catch them. I, they'd just come off the screen and hit me, or I just wouldn't pay enough attention. And, like, some attacks will take half of your health, and if you're not paying attention well, and using the health one replenishers. Of the, one of the, I mean, yeah, they do, everybody does do a lot of damage. Yeah. But one of the things I learned was um, uh, 
A, don't take stupid risks. Like, I keep talking about do, using the counter spark attack to like mm-hmm. deflect bullets and like, just block. Ninja stars. Just yeah. fucking block. Unless you really know you're going to get it, just block. Is that the thing, the too, risk? is if you, if you do time it perfectly and they throw like a star at you or whatever and you deflect it, you don't have enough time to get to them to deliver the attack before the stun wears off. If they threw right. the star from like 20 feet or whatever, by the time you get to them, it's worn off and well, they're ready to fight again. Well, if you hold triangle, you will do a dash attack at them, which usually, usually... It won't usually, always reach, it though. It won't always reach, but usually it will reach. Yeah. Um, but you can't, get, you can't bet on it. And the weird thing about this game is you, there aren't any attacks out of running. Mm-hmm. You know, like normally in a game, especially an open world game, you'd expect if you're if you're dive sprinting, attack or yeah. if you hit an attack button just to start a fight or something, yeah. you'd get like a sprinting attack yeah, or yeah. Extra, like a little baseball. That's not in this. Yeah, there's none of that. No, um, it's real weird. It feels real weird to play this early on. And I'm still still I have played this game for probably 20 hours. Mm-hmm. I am still hitting the wrong button to sprint. Me too. Because it's circle. I changed it. I keep clicking. I changed it. The left stick. I to, changed it to, to click and that's stick. stealth. And I'm just like, oh. I flipped like, them. I flipped circle and click in the stick. The problem though is that like I can't figure out how to like toggle the sprint. There is no toggle for yeah. the sprint. So you, you have, have to, to hold click it. and hold the click down but to well, run. Well, if you hold it for a certain number of seconds, it will stay. As long as you keep it pushed all the way no, up. No, no. As you have to hold it for a second or two. Oh, really? And then you can let go and it will keep sprinting. It's weird how it works. The reason is because the sprint button is also the dodge. Right. So if you, so that's why I didn't put it on the stick because I can't click. No, the left it stick actually to dodge. still the dodge still stays on the circle. It'll just move Weird. just the sprint. Yeah. Although sometimes I go to sprint and he does he does do a roll. You're mm-hmm. right. It's the same button. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You might have just doubled the buttons up. <laughs> but, the, but see, for me, all I've been doing through this whole game is timing triangle, which is what do they call it? The counter spark. The counter spark. Because they tell you over and over use counter spark, and it does work if you time it right. It will like basically stun them and give you an opening to go in and do your thing. However, like the window for that is so narrow that like if I play it on my TV or my PlayStation is plugged directly into the television, I can nail almost every single one. When I would take it back and put it in my capture equipment where it introduces like 20 milliseconds of lag or whatever, then I was like 50-50 on whether I could time it or not. So that shows you how thin the window is to nail those. But I've been going through the whole game playing that way because... To me, the game isn't really about, like, chip damage. It's mm-hmm. about doing, like, major damage. And to do that, you have to, basically, as we talked about earlier, you have to whittle down their key so they don't have any, and it leaves them open. And for me, doing that counter spark, whatever the hell it's called, basically, like, wipes out their key, like, right away. And you can go in and do, like, a big-time move that takes off, like, half of their health or whatever. And that's yeah. how I've been playing the game. I mean, that's more or less how it's supposed to work. The problem is that, like, Sekiro works with that sort of system because Sekiro doesn't have stamina. Yeah. It's all timing. Mm-hmm. And so if you get hit from the timing of Sekiro, it's a it's a disaster. This one, you just kind of keep trying over and over again. Uh, you can keep interrupting uh, stuff if you if you get hit in the combo. Like mm-hmm. you're not really there's not really any any stun locking in this game. Yeah. Um, you can uh, so like you can keep trying, but you might just lose too much life. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally not. Like it's 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 not that. And also when you've got allies, you can actually switch between them. Yep. There's a whole thing in this where like certain fighting styles and weapons, you know, like Roche, you kind of Rochambeau like against other ones. Yeah. So you'll yeah. See, like, you see like rock well, paper see, scissors. You yeah. see an enemy with like uh, red arrow. It means your fighting style is not effective against his fighting style. Guess what? Uh, you're still gonna win. Like, yeah. it, like you, it does a little bit less key damage. I think you can like probably dominate them better if you switch to something that like. But I've never needed to do that to win a fight. Like, you can still spam there. just your quick, str- your quick strikes you and win a it, lot but of battles. You're not, you're not gonna, you're gonna run out of stamina. It's gonna get fight. awkward at the um, end. You're both gonna be out of stamina. But if it's not like a big, big enemy, if it's just like a random soldier, I'll run up. I do a three hit. I just spam. I do a three yeah. hit light combo sometimes i'll throw in a, a triangle afterwards i'll hit the the r1 to do the blade flash to reset my stamina yeah. and then before they can recover i can hit them again like like those uh, rank and file enemies do not stand a chance anymore and weirdly one of the things i had to learn early on was that i was expecting them to be better than they were at fighting like if you've got three guys around you and you have targeted one of them like you, you have your target on that's the only guy who will attack you nine times no, you're out right. of ten. The rest like, of them just dance around. They will all just yeah. stand around and wait. It's and like so Assassin's I, Creed. <laughs> and so I kept standing there waiting for them to do something and waiting to like. Blo- and I was like, oh, I'm gonna block over here. Oh, I'm gonna counter over here. Nope. And like, no, it's just I was just Doesn't reacting happen. to nothing. And yeah. so I, one of the reasons I was getting hit was I was expecting them to be more aggressive, and they just aren't. Yeah. Which is weird. 
But I, um, even on the easier difficulty setting, obviously... Unless they're I, off camera. Then they'll hit you from behind yeah. after you've killed another guy. It, it's strange. Yeah. Even after I put it on the easier difficulty setting, I still died every once in a while. I would still die a few times to each boss. And I, like I said, if you get overwhelmed sometimes and some dude attacks you from off screen, I would still die. It's a very weird combat system for an open world game. Yeah. That's really what I... I it was weird to me because like you're basically riding around playing like an Assassin's Creed kind of thing where you're all these different things to do and these different places. You're riding a horse around. Which, by the way, you can get better horses that are faster, but one of the other stats the horses have is stamina. And if the horse can run out of stamina, I have never seen it happen. Me either. There's no and I've ran a you can, long Yeah, you gallop ways. as long as you want. I don't know what the stamina <laughs> yeah. is. If it means... That, but maybe it means like... Well, no, that's not the, the thing for like getting knocked off the horse because that's a different... Stamina, that's a different stat. The, yeah. the, the harnesses yeah, upgrade. Yeah. I don't know what the stamina means in this game. For yeah, I mean, there's a whole thing in this game, too, where you get like horse armor and different tack yeah. that you can use. Well, and this, it is, this your... is just the usual Team Ninja thing these days of just systems on systems oh, on systems. It that gets just ridiculous. Don't, it just don't matter. It's and ridiculous. Like, like, I just got overwhelmed with it after a while. Like, there's this look whole... at, I mean, look at that. You can hold 2,000 items. Dude, the other thing about this game is, like, selling all the stuff you get is a full-time job. Like, you get so much. You don't even yeah, realize tons it. tons and tons you of You don't even realize it until you go look in your inventory. You're like, oh, my God, I won that fight. I just got 30 things. Mm -hmm. Like, you, literally, it's a full-time job to sell off all the crap that you get that you don't want. Like, the gear creep in this is crazy. Like, literally, you just mm -hmm. get another sword that's, like, two more powerful than the one you had before. Or you'll beat a boss, and you'll get a sword that's, like... 80 powered higher than anything else and you keep that sword for the next like six hours yeah. or whatever like and then like there's an upgrade like a blacksmith upgrade thing but it doesn't upgrade anything enough to be worth but it. they keep pushing you to it they keep telling like, you the go there. And i'm like no the, <laughs> why i spend two thousand money and like a bunch of resources to upgrade this five yeah. damage when i could just use this other sword that's like 50 more that i picked yeah. up from a random side quest it's very weird and here you're seeing the skill trees there's four different skill trees based upon your four different attributes. Four different skill and, trees and five different upgrade points. Yeah. There's a, there's general skill points, and you'll see there it says cur po that's charm points. Every it, every tree has its own charm points, intelligent points, dexterity points, and strength points, and you can only get the the specific points from doing certain things and accomplishing certain stuff or cert getting certain items that, that add one for you, like like, like manuals yeah. and stuff. And those are your those are your um, your bottlenecks. On yeah. the, like you you have to use the specific to the tree skill points to open certain skills, and yeah. until you get them, you're stuck. The There's currency's all do. goofy too. It's like the main currency that you get like is worthless. There's nothing you can buy it. Like you get these other separate yeah, you can silver only, coins. Standard money only goes towards blacksmithing and like buying like health stuff from yeah. the apothecary. The real currency is this silver plate stuff you get from other things. Including the cat concierge mini game, yeah, which is not what I. That's the best thing in this game is the cats. <laughs> like you go, one of the collectibles is literally all the cats in Japan, yeah. and you go pick them up and hug them, and they run off. And then there's a geisha who loves all the cats and like basically gives you rewards for for bringing enough cats. But then you get you still it, have to it, pay with the silver coins but, though. Oh yeah, but you get them every time you get a cat, you get some silver coins. Yeah, and like eventually, and then the calicos you have to sneak up on, which is accurate. Uh huh. And um, it's it's. Again, this is just this cat system. And then you went at your at your longhouse, at your home base, you eventually get the cat concierge system, which is like the old Assassin's Creed ship games yep. where you have to you pick a mission and you check your cat stats and you send a cat out and the cat's gone for like an hour and then it comes back with rewards. <laughs> and then there's a dog equivalent with a yeah. Shiba Inu as well yeah. where you can put money on the dog and the dog goes to other people's games and however many people pet the dog, that's how many random items he comes back with. And I've gotten some like god tier items. Like really good stuff. Stuff, if you really. give the dog ten thousand money and send him out to come back in like three hours, I've gotten I got a uh, what was it? I got a charm that upped my key like like uh, uh, like a um, ton regeneration by like seventeen percent. Wow! Like it changed how I fight. But the but to Matt's point, the systems that's just the scratch on the surface. They keep piling on. There's this whole like bond system with other characters where if you do things for them, you create this bond, and then that determines whether you're like pro shogun or anti shogun. Well, that's a and, separate like, thing. It's insane. So, like, so the bond stuff is like you you can get their fighting styles and certain bonuses from them, and then each all the all the bond allies are are separated into either pro shogunate or anti shogunate and you have to and when the story missions come up after a certain point you'll see they are split into a pro shogunate or anti shogunate version you have to choose which mission giver to go to depending on the like i think purple is anti is pro shogunate and green is anti 
And the problem is... Here you can see the Assassin's Creed sinking the right. area. And the problem is the pro-Shogunate thing... Like, they don't do a very good job of incentivizing you to pick one or the other because, like, the pro-Shogunate is, so, I guess so far, is the head of the Geisha house who is clearly manipulating everybody to do what she wants them to do. Uh, and uh, the Red Demon, who's the big, uh, the prefect guy, I remember, the, 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 the local daimyo, I think it is, and he's historic. I mean, this is all historically based. It's in mm -hmm. Yokohama, which was the first Western port in Japan, and it covers the period of time in 1859 when they signed the treaty that basically opened Japan to the West. Yeah, because Japan and was like an isolationist country. An isolation for hundreds of years. Yeah, and this is the first contact with outside people they'd had in forever. And, and Yoko that's what this that's whole why Yokohama game is about. looks like. Yeah. Looks like a, a European town because the the Europeans who came in basically built it up that way. And the guy, he's he's trying to sign a deal with with them and and bring people in. And um, and he's he's known as the Red Demon, and historically he basically perpetrated a reign of terror on this part of Japan during the period of time, and you see that in this game. Yeah. So you could side with him, or you could side with the anti shogunate, which is a group of the coolest dudes you've ever met. Right. Like yeah. there's one guy. Who gets but you don't drunk want to be a part of them. <laughs> there's one guy who gets drunk all the time. There's one guy who's just a wacky dude who wanders the countryside shooting people whenever he wants to. There's yeah. one guy who's addicted to gambling. Like it's well, here's just, the drunkard right here. The drunkard. Yeah. The yeah. drunkard just gets drunk and fights people and forgets he did it. Well, the, you fight him the first time he's yeah. drunk. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty hard fight. Yeah, that because is because you're not fight. expecting it. Yeah, and like you're stuck in this little little area with courtyard. Him. Yeah, oh, I found a lot of fights to be hard in this. Again, like I don't feel any guilt for turning down the difficulty in this. Like I actually moderately enjoyed the game once I did that. Like I, there's no, I have no shame, and I won't going forward. I have no shame. Like I just want to enjoy playing video games. Like they don't need to be torture to me. Like every once in a while, playing a tough game, cool. I don't want every game I play to be like this. And it feels like all of them are like this now. Like, Well, everything Team Ninja makes is like this. But it just feels like, but I'm going back, like we're going to talk about a game in a minute that's like this. Like three games I played last week were like this, where you just yeah. didn't die to any enemy. And like, I just don't think this is a good way for the industry to go forward. I think it's catering to the core. It's like, okay, we can make these games and we'll sell 8 million or whatever. But like, if you want to hit 15, 20 million, generally Elden Ring, the exception, that's not going to happen. Like, I think a lot of people are starting to figure out that they're making games. They're not making games for them anymore. They're making them for us, like the crazy, hardcore gaming maniacs that we are. And, like, I'm not ashamed to say that I am, but, like, I don't know if it's good for the market that all these games are being made for us, Matt. I, I don't just really, don't know if I, it is. I mean, I don't really know what you're talking about here. Like, if you could give me some examples. Well, I just talked about how, like, my uncle and my brother hated Elden Ring. And all they're right. like, wait a minute. This is, like, the big thing that everyone's talking about? This is, like, the... Like, they went and bought it. Like, they're like, dude, look at the reviews of this game. Look at all the people talking about it on social media. This game has to be for everybody. This has to be an awesome game everyone's going to love. And they went and bought it, and they're well, like... that certainly isn't this. And they're like, what the hell is... Like, this isn't Elden Ring, but it's still hard. I mean, like, it's still taking cues from the Souls... I mean, this game doesn't exist in the form it exists in if the Souls games don't hit yeah. back when they I mean, did. I look, mean, I'm glad they finally, Team Ninja finally put an easier difficulty setting in their games. This is the first one. Uh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. yeah. They, they did, finally relented. Well, I mean, they did have difficulty settings in Ninja Gaiden. But even the easiest was still hard, Ninja, basically. Ninja Dog was, was not yeah. uh, a walk in the a walk. I was surprised when I turned it down on this, they didn't give me, like, a bandana or something to signify I was playing it on, like, the easier setting, but... They're, they're very cool about it, I guess is the way I would put it. Um, so I don't know, man. To me, this is another one of those games that like either you turn on the difficulty or you're going to be pulling your hair out half the time. And just and the other I'll, thing... I mean, I'll just say if you're, if you're a veteran of Souls games, this is going to be pretty standard difficulty for you. Yeah. It's, not, it's not that hard. Yeah, it's not as hard as it's like not that Dark hard. Souls. And the main thing is the, the problem with the difficulty in this game is that the game's tutorial and like pop-up windows make you think that it's way harder than it's going to be. Because... You can just ignore most of the systems that are layered on this thing's combat system can, and just fight yeah. people. Like, it doesn't matter. The like, other thing I found in this just game, Just be Matt, aware of your stamina and know that, like, if you figure out how... To, if you understand the timing of, like, an attack and you know you can counter it, do it. And stab them when the red dot pops up. That's yeah. it. It's real simple to the point of being irritating now. Or just run. I found that you can just run away from and run past almost everything oh, yeah, in this yeah, game. Nobody can catch you. Like it's, it's, uh, and they don't the, follow you for a long distance in either. terms of the open world stuff if you get in trouble just run away yeah, yeah. or Easily. you can just even if you can't get past like a section of the game just run through it I had points before I turned down the difficulty where I was like I can't get through this I'm tired of fighting these same 20 dudes over and over because the other thing too is like the checkpoints in this can be freaking brutal man like there was one section I played where literally it was like 30 some minutes that between checkpoints 
Like literally. Is this, this is you playing? No, this, no, is, this is a is trailer. A, okay, this say, is Team like, Ninja. A, okay, I was gonna say that's a, that was a solid <laughs> yeah. counter. Yeah. No, this is Team Ninja playing. Um, so anyway, I you know again, if you're like me and you're you're like I don't mind playing a hard game every once in a while, like. This one to me is right on the fringe. Again, I played well, again, on. Well, again, it would be it would be different if the rest of the game was rewarding in any right. way. Because we haven't like, even really got to the root of the problem with this game, Matt, which is that it's just effing boring. It is boring mm-hmm. beyond anything I've played. I can't. I do not care about. And it's, I'll say this, Matt. It's making me wonder whether I should care about like Assassin's Creed Red, like because it's the same setting, mm-hmm. and it's like well, it just doesn't interest me. Like it's. Is it? Is it? What, do we it's know? It's set in feudal Japan, right? This is not feudal Japan, though. This yeah. Is, this is this is uh, Meiji Restoration Japan. Um, this is a very different. I we mean, don't, I don't know a lot about Red yet, honestly. I, I don't know if we know when Red is set. I mean, I think yeah. a feudal Japan set. Because look, you know what else is set as a samurai epic in in Japan is Ghost of Tsushima, and that's great. Ghost of so, Tsushima makes this. It shows you though, like how it's done right. Oh yeah, like hundred percent. Playing through this game, it makes you realize so many things in Ghost of Tsushima where they made the right call. Mm-hmm. We were like, oh, I see now why they decided to do it that way in Ghost of Tsushima because it doesn't freaking work and it's boring as hell. Matt, there's a section of this game where you go to like basically like the red like district where all the geishas are and all the prostitutes are and it's still boring as shit it's like if you can't make going to the red light district interesting what the hell Mm -hmm. like the whole game is like that nothing ever happens where i'm like oh that's interesting or that's cool like i just this i just found this game dreadfully dull i mean i thought it was funny when you had to fight the admiral guy his name was matthew perry right (laughs) That's a real historical person. That's it is, name is yeah, that. But yeah. it's like, that's funny. You're fighting the guy from Friends. <laughs> Unintentional humor, yeah. But one thing I will say that I did like about it, like, you can get around the world pretty easily. There's fast travel out the yin-yang. Like, have you seen in the B-roll, you have a glider, you have a horse. You can actually work in tandem. Like, you can glide. And then while you're about 20 feet off the ground, call your horse, and your horse just swoops in right underneath you, and you land right on the horse mm-hmm. and keep riding. Like, there's cool little stuff like that in the game. But otherwise, like, I just found it dreadfully dull yeah. and boring. Well, then, like, they're showing, like, all the pulling and the, like, stealth killing. People. Like, the stealth in this game is awful. Like, it's just, like, like you are you have no idea where anybody is until later in the game when you get a bell that lets you see right. where people are. Mm-hmm. And then I realized after a, a couple times using it, they can hear the bell. When you and ring like, the bell, and yeah. you ring the bell, they'll be like, what was that? I'm like, that's not the point of a fucking thing like that. What are you doing? Like... Yeah. It's so annoying. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah. Like you, you I get, really struggled to squeeze entertainment out of this game. I gave it I, everything I had. I lowered the difficulty. I tried, and I made headway. It was crazy. I'll say this, too. It was crazy how fast I could go through the game on the easier difficulty setting. I've made a fair amount of headway. I mean, I've, I've played a lot of the open world stuff. Wandering around the world and doing random stuff is still mildly entertaining to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I keep thinking of um, uh, Outcast. Mm. That had a similar, I mean, but like Outcast didn't have the self seriousness of this, no, so no. it wasn't as obnoxious when the cutscenes started. Um, it felt like the 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 stuff you were doing was a little more thematically related to things. It didn't feel everything like the cat thing in this is great, mm-hmm. but it feels so dissonant with the rest of the game. Yeah, like, all the all this the open world collectible stuff doesn't re- none of it really gels together into something that feels like a coherent whole, as opposed to like um, Ghost of Tsushima. Where, like, A, the combat system felt like it was just complex enough and, and had enough to it that an open world game that you could run into fighting at any time like, it made more sense. Whereas this, I have, I'm not kidding, I have, like, 30 different fighting styles I can swap between, between, like, nine different weapons. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just going to use the normal sword. I don't sword. need them, yeah. Because, like, I don't understand. <laughs> I use a katana as well. I have yeah. seven fighting styles yeah. just for the katana. I know. They, they put too much focus in and the wrong places matters. and no one cares. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They, they worked way too hard on stuff that no one's going to notice and no one's going to care about and didn't work enough on the stuff that's obvious. Like, I don't also, know. Also, I can tell you who Jin is in yeah. Ghost of Tsushima. Like, he's a character. He's a person. Like, he has he has feelings about things. I know he thinks about things. And I know that he, he, has, a, he has a big thing about honor and wants the respect of his uncle. But he, but he also knows he has to do whatever he has to do to protect Japan and protect his people. Uh, he also uh, loves animals, and he was more concerned about what happened to his horse after the shipwreck than almost anyone else who was on the boat, yeah, which yeah. I respect. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the reasons he can get to the fox shrine is the foxes know he's a good dude, and he's going to yeah. pet them afterward. Like it all, like, there's, there's a tapestry of this character that I can put together, in part because he actually has scenes with people. Every once in a while, your character talks in yeah. this. You get to get to pick a voice for them. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, 
they only talk. Like, my character only talks when she beats the boss, basically. And there's mm-hmm. a little cutscene, and she says like a rudimentary word, and yeah. which might be AI generated. I'm not 100 percent sure. <laughs> oh, the voice acting um, in this is terrible, Matt. Voice acting is a bunch of oh bunch of choices. <laughs> Everyone in this game seems to be a Japanese native speaker who knows English Kinda well knows enough. Kind of knows English, yeah. But some of the some of the accents in this are like I kept oh. the subtitle. I never keep the subtitles on if I'm using English me voices because I don't. Yeah. I, it distracts me, and yeah. I'd rather. I had to keep them on because like sometimes I, I, I don't know. Also, it hit a point where I'm like, I'm just gonna skip through the. I'm just gonna read the text <laughs> and jump through this because yeah. like this did not need much. Like Yakuza, there's moments where Yakuza is better at, back in the day when it was just like there were voiced cutscenes and like 90 percent of the game was just text boxes you yeah. could g- jump through. This game is that too. Yeah, it's like no, just get just get me. I get the gist of it. I understand it. We're gonna yes, the Shogunate is evil. Um, go to the thing, meet the thing, kill the people. I get it. I, it's, there's no complexity here that you need to understand to get through the game. The characters are incidental for the most part. Um, a lot of stuff happens kind of out of order. Like you get the the glider pretty early on, mm-hmm. and you immediately can jump off a thing and start gliding around and get straight. Basically, you can. You, it's very funny actually. Early on, one of your big goals is to get this permit that lets you get through this checkpoint that's closed off to get to Yokohama. Mm-hmm. And in the mission where you go up and fight, get your first ally and go f- get the permit by beating this one boss. You then get the glider in the in his storehouse, and you can just glide down to Yokohama, and you never need to get past the checkpoint. Yeah, you know you need to get like the permit is never important. <laughs> you just glide right into Yokohama, and nobody reacts to it at all. Yeah. Um, which is, and then later you run into the guy who invented the glider, and there's a whole thing where he teaches you how to use the glider. He's like, it might work. I don't know. It's really experimental, but it should work. The science is, is sound. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've been using it for like four hours, dude. It's fine. You're good. It's- That's straight out of Assassin's Creed too. Who was it that built you stuff in Assassin's Creed? Leonardo uh, da Vinci. Leonardo, yeah, da Vinci. It's the same thing with this guy. Like you bring him resources, he builds you contraptions. Except and- this takes much, 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 much longer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. he wants yeah. these like foreign books from things, and there's no way to really know where you get foreign books from as yeah. rewards for things. And it's just that's the thing. There's so many times in this game where I'm just like between the the, the, the upgrade system and how the, the skill points work, and how to up how you have to upgrade and build your relationship and bonds with these other characters to unlock things. You then need to unlock the next thing you want. Like I, just, so many times, I just feel like I'm stuck. I don't know what to do next. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm just gonna go run around and do random shit because like the next the next mission, I don't. And it like, won't automatically like keep you on the main quest path, is no. what I found. You have to start looking through the quest and try to figure out which one is like the main quest. Like I've struggled to the, the top one is always the main one. Is it? And they have a different. Because it feels co- like they they're different. No, they're of different color. They're often the lower level, like the main. Oh, the quest. main quest is often lower level. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I first got all those the all the anti shogunate allies and they, I, you meet them all and you do the thing. They gave me uh, the the next main quest, which was level five, mm-hmm. and another quest to do with the first ally you get the 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 ro- the rogue han solo guy yeah. mm-hmm. um that was level 10 and i was level eight at the time yeah. so i couldn't do that second um, so i came back to it later after i'd gone through more stuff um but yeah it's a little weird and then like th- so all the levels don't really always matter like you get the there's like a there's also there's a photograph set, uh, quite, like there's, there's taking pictures there's a of photography things. element to the game photography yeah. element which is bizarre um <laughs> it's bizarre. Some, somebody invented plus the camera is like this the big like this <laughs> like but also it spits around. out the picture so it's apparently a polaroid <laughs> who knew yeah um but the yeah. but the um so you there's you know one of the open world things is taking pictures of landmarks and that's marked on the map but then you can go to the photo photograph guy and he'll give you specific missions. And all the first set of missions were all listed as level 9. And I couldn't figure out why they were listed as level 9. Because they're not combat yeah, why, missions. Yeah, why like, would they be rated at all? And apparently it's just because they're in areas of the map uh, that are rated as level 9 areas. Nah. Uh, so you can't always trust. On that. So then I'm like, well, well, then why is the other guy's quest level 10? Because it's in the same areas as always. Because I'm fighting a stronger guy. It doesn't tell you a lot. It doesn't even yeah. tell you much about the... The choices you're making, where like, you know, once you start getting to the, the main missions, where you have to pick between shogun, pro shogun, and anti shogun, it it doesn't really explain to you what the consequences of choosing one or the other is going to be. Except there's like a bunch of rewards on one side and there, yeah. and both of the rewards seem just about it's as the useless. Same, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, there's a couple of like gestures I can do, which I don't understand why I want to do gestures because this is not an online game and right. like, no one reacts to them anyway. Yeah, so it's who really cares? Weird. Like, I don't know what to make. Oh, there's so much stuff packed in this thing that I'm like, why is this here? And I don't like, care what? about like any no. of it. 
Yeah, I, it's like weirdly bloated, but it also feels kind of like empty. Yeah, like I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It just it feels also, like there's you guys too have much. Been, yeah, you guys have been seeing the graphics as well. This is not a good looking game by any stretch of the imagination. Like no, even though not, it is an open world, it's game, not like, bad looking, but it's not nothing special. I would say. I, I think parts of it look kind of bad. Some of the character models I thought looked pretty rotten. And then if you're like riding at any semblance of speed, like everything is just drawing in, and like the LOD is really bad. Although. We've had games of that over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I haven't. I, I haven't, it hasn't bothered me much. I, I have it. I think I have it on balance setting. So I have it on um, ray what. tracing, the highest graphic. Oh, I don't setting. have it. Yeah, that's why you're getting all the that because the performance is way, really bad. It's they, not they a good to, looking game. They need to update it, and it doesn't run very well either. No, it runs very well. Oh, on, on your my, setting, it yeah. does. Not on, on mine. <laughs> it runs very smooth on mine. Oh, not not if you put on ray tracing, it does not. No, run I did not smoothly. put ray tracing on. I would already read that that setting is yeah. is really. They need they like needs patching. Bad. Yeah. So I stuck around. I played also about 20 hours of this. I really have very little interest in continuing on. Um, I probably don't will not play any more of this. I don't. There's no. It just made me want to play Ghost of Tsushima again. Yeah. There's no carrots dangling there that are exciting or enticing to make me want to keep going. I'm just like, is it just gonna be more drab characters I don't care about? More plot that I don't care about? But you're not I'm, riveted by the story of your right. inexplicably evil twin. Yeah. Now? Are they gonna add another system that I don't care about? Like at the 25 hour mark? Like, probably. I mean, I don't know. They added gambling. Yeah. That doesn't matter. It has no and sen- yeah, the no training thing and there's like all there's yeah, I don't know. There's so much weird shit you can do and it's I'm just like, but why? Yeah. For what? It's like, oh, you get loot for it. I'm like, I have 400 swords. I don't need I, more. I, and, and, and none of money. them are as good as the one I've been using for 10 hours. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, and what I have tons of money you. too. Like I yeah, I did, did not really enjoy it. I enjoyed it more after I dropped the difficulty setting. Playing it on the default difficulty setting, I was literally going to throw it off of the deck of my apartment. I was like, I don't want to play. I didn't want to play it at all. And then once I dropped it down to the difficult, the easier difficulty setting, then I actually enjoyed it a little bit, like playing through it. Oh, yeah, I guess there is co-op. Yeah, we forgot to mention that. Yeah. So one of the cool things about this, it's probably the coolest thing about the game, I think, is some missions, you go to do them, and they give you the option to like call in for help. And you can call in your friends list, people on your friends list, if they're playing, or you can just ask they for random not. people. They are not. <laughs> I but, don't have any one on my friends list of you playing this. But I'll say this. Like, every time I put out a call, there were people there in, like, 30 seconds to mm-hmm. play. And it makes a world of difference. The other thing, too, is that, like, I could be playing the bulk of the game on the easier difficulty settings. Then if I call in people to help, I can jack it up. And I, can, and I don't even know if there's any reason to do that. I haven't. I don't think It doesn't so. seem like it. But still, I'll I'm jack sure it up. I'm sure there's a trophy for beating it on whatever difficulty at the I end. I tend to jack it up because I think I'll be more likely to match with people if I put it on the default difficulty versus the easier one. And sure enough, within 30 seconds, there's two people there ready to play. And they, if you play with two other people, you can accomplish these missions in like a minute sometimes. Like if you're a good people who know what they're doing, like sometimes they just leave me in the dust and I'm like running to catch up with them. By the time I get there, the mission's over and they've already beaten the boss or whatever. I mean, that's so, classic Souls. Yeah. Co-op. That's the coolest part of the game to me, being able to call in for help. The I rest ne- of it, I I've didn't. never done it. You haven't done it? No. I, I don't need it. I, yeah. I, I have the uh, computer-controlled allies are more than enough, and you can switch to them whenever you want. Yeah. So, you know, no problem. And that does help with bosses. So if, like, you're fighting a boss, and the character you're playing as is about to die, or it, yeah. and you switch to the other one. Or if they do die, you switch to another guy, re- resurrect your character. Right, you can back. quickly roll over to them, and then re- resurrect your character that just yeah. died, and switch right back to him and start playing with him again. So you're right. Like, as you play more and you start to understand like the ins and outs of stuff like it does start to get a little bit easier or more manageable i would guess once you learn what you can ignore yeah basically like yeah. that once you realize like how little of it needs to actually be paid attention to or used regularly to make progress it becomes a lot more manageable yeah um matt would i would not recommend that people buy this no i don't know i would say not go buy no. ghost of tsushima or just play it again yeah Instead of this. And if you want an open world game, go play Dark Dragon's Dogma 2. There's a million other games. I or anything else, yeah. yeah. But like, or it may, if you want like a better modern, t- like, you know, with doing interesting things with the open world, play Dragon's Dogma 2. If you want a throwback, kind of mildly empty, just go p- to point and accomplish basic objective open world game, go play Outcast A New Beginning. I liked Outcast more than this game. Same. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Which is crazy to say. Way more imagination, way more... So, it's just fun. It, it, it was knows, just more it knows fun what to it play. Is. It doesn't yeah. pile all this extra crap on it for no yeah. reason. Yeah. No, it's a pure, it's a pure, you know, distilled, like, baseline open world game. It was just more enjoyable. 
Like, I just didn't have fun playing this game. Like, I just didn't. I didn't it. dislike this game, but it's not worth 70 bucks. Yeah. And it's not, uh, it's, it's not particularly engaging most of the time. Yeah. Um, I did enjoy, the, my, the most enjoyment I got out of this game is the same enjoyment I get out of most open world games, is once you let me go, and I can just run around doing whatever I want, and I can put a podcast on and just do that for like three hours, mm -hmm. just did that just fine. Yeah. But I would argue that because sometimes you get in a fight and you actually end up having to fight for your life, because sometimes these guys are tougher than you think they're going to be, it's not really a very good kickback and relax open world game. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure who to recommend it to that's that. why i can't recommend you know? it to anyone i would not buy it like um, if you're a souls pro who wants like a rudimentary i might i got it's the first it's very clearly the first open world game team team ninjas yeah, ever yeah. like it's, it's that's true you know it's an em people have been calling it an empty world and it pretty much is like there's not I mean, a lot it's happening. filled with just stuff you don't want to do filled with endless <laughs> i mean there's like you know npcs everywhere i mean it's not yeah. a dead world it's not like empty yeah. in terms of there's literally no objects it's just nothing it. it's just, there's nothing to do. to do yeah um like if you want if you if you're confident in your stamina meter management and you want to apply that to a random open world game where you can run around and you know you liberate little villages and do that go nuts but again i still i'm still not happy i paid 70 bucks for this yeah. <laughs> it's like i would I, even after what happened to me with dragon's dogma 2 i would i 1000% recommend dragon's dogma 2 over this game yeah it's just doing more interesting things yep and that game also has systems on systems on it systems does. yeah but most of the systems matter yeah and i also I found my in my mind mixing up the two games mm -hmm. like when i was thinking of this morning when i was thinking about like what am i going to say when i talk about i start i realized i started pulling elements from dragon's dogma 2 into this game for some reason i'm like oh no wait that's actually dragon's dogma mm -hmm. 2 so um anyway that's Rise of the Ronin. It is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. I wouldn't say that's two thumbs down from Matt and I, but that's two don't buys. Yeah, it's kind of two... I don't know. It's 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 fine. Yeah. It's not bad. You think they'll make a sequel? I don't know. I think they will. I don't know if this... Because it's competent. I don't, this, I don't know if this thing's going to sell enough to warrant that. Well, my guess is PlayStation paid a ton of money for the development, and the money isn't that important to... Yeah, well, you know what that also describes? Bloodborne. Yeah. It also means that they allowed PlayStation to take the risk. Right, exactly. <laughs> They're like, well, this failed. Now, we, we didn't lose the money. No, we learned we learned a lot from building this yeah. open world, and now we can go make our own game right. we, we own and make it good. Yeah. And that I would play. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely, I'm definitely interested in what they do next with this, mm -hmm. but this, a lot of this feels like proof of concept to me. Yeah, I agree. So there you go. That's Rise of the Ronin. Again, it's a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Next up. And again, aren't you glad they didn't just make a Ninja Gaiden game? Why don't they? Because they can't. Yeah, because I don't think they can that, anymore. That's, that's not there. Because if the Ninja Gaiden game would have a stamina bar. Yeah. Like, this is what that would be. No, you're right. Yeah. Uh, next up, as I mentioned earlier, hinted earlier, another PlayStation 5 exclusive, a game that a lot of y'all have been tracking for a while now, a game that Matt and I have been reluctant to embrace. It is a game called Stellar Blade. We talked to you guys about it last week. We mentioned that there was a demo going up on the PlayStation Store that happened. Matt and I both downloaded it. We both played it from the beginning to the end. And now we're going to talk about it. Um, before we get going, Matt, what is what is the thing that surprised you the most about Stellar Blade now that you've actually played it? How limited the combat is. Okay. A lot of people's previews, they were surprised at how deep the combat was. I don't know what they played. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, uh, I mean, some of this is because a lot of the, some of the, if you want to call it depth, is locked behind the skill tree early on. Um, but th I was expecting more of a Devil May Cry, um, juggle, uh, stuff. Bayonetta clone, and it isn't. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't have half the, the variety and the depth that those games do. This is more, there's a lot more near automata in this one. He said he was inspired by it. The guy I can that, see, I can see the lead that. developer. I mean, I assume that was because you're playing a robot sex pot, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, more than like what the game and you know, yeah, and certainly he did was not inspired by the content of the uh, of the narrative of Automata because yeah. that's not here at all. Yeah. I guess the other thing I might be say I was surprised by not surprised by but I guess impressed by the technical presentation on this is flawless. It looks really like, good. It yeah. is gorgeous. Yeah, like the all the space stuff here is amazing. All the stuff on the like the the detail in the game in terms of the visuals in terms of just like just the rocks on the ground yeah. amazing. Like they knocked it out and it runs pretty well too. Like it's like I am extremely impressed by the tech on display. It really bucks the trend of a lot of those games coming from Korea where you see a trailer and then the game never comes out at all mm. or when it finally does it looks nothing like what it's supposed to look like. 
Yeah, like, no, I'm, they they delivered on this in terms of the visuals for sure. Yeah, uh, it's too bad so much of the visuals are de are devoted to uh, the fact that most of the characters in this game are from late '90s softcore porn yeah. art. Now the art is a different story. Yeah. Like technically, this game is a really good looking. Artistically, that's obviously you're gonna your mileage is gonna vary there depending oh, on your taste. Yeah. But but the girl's outfit, Eve's outfit, is one of the weirdest things. I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. She has like a green like tie. Yeah, they they're, they 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 kind of have like a little formal yeah look to it, and then like I don't know I don't know what to say I don't know <laughs> yeah. what to tell you. I mean, the, no one's supposed to be looking at the outfit. You're supposed to be looking at her tits and ass. Yeah, like the whole point is that. And it's, if that's the point, mission accomplished. This scene is so well, that, gratuitous, right here. Well, that's the only thing I've seen anybody <laughs> actually talk about on Twitter. But it's like everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, it's a game of the year." I'm like, "How come every shot for the game of the year is just a shot of her ass climbing a ladder and not the actual, you know, <laughs> gameplay?" Well, there's her outfit. She's she's got a weird like necktie on. It's so bizarre. Well, there's a lot of like bondage signaling. In yeah, this I guess. It. And they're all like kind of everybody's wearing these ridiculous heels. Yeah. Um. It's it's honestly embarrassing. <laughs> it it's, kind it's of is. Really. I was glad really my silly. wife has been away for it, Easter. It makes me. I was glad I played this while she was gone. It makes me think of like there was that little wave of Korean like RPGs on the PS2 like Mana. Was it Mana Kamiya? Or like you remember what I'm talking about? I like, remember it was like, what it was you're like talking very, about. Yeah. A, a very yellow color scheme, mm -hmm. and she. I think the main girl in that even had the little tie on too. Yeah, it's, it seems to be a thing. But they all had giant asses, <laughs> like huge, thick asses, and like that's basically what I'm getting from this. Well, the, the, um, the asses in this are just shiny. Shiny. I mean, her. It's pretty. I mean, she's scanned from the actual actress who plays a real her, person. Yeah. Um, which doesn't excuse what they're doing. I mean, I guess it's working because there's a certain audience that is feels very served by this the other thing i oh, served the other, <laughs> the other thing i don't understand about this game is why there are no iframes in the dodges yeah um it's bizarre there's 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 a bunch of combat stuff in this game that but baffle me absolutely baffle me the fact that there's no iframes in the dodge which is not the only game that do that this mm -hmm. way but it's like that's why dark souls works yes yeah, is because the iframes the yeah. iframes in in the role yeah um the fact that um Several of the things that make the combat system function are hit are locked behind skill tree stuff, and she starts with like a third of one of the skill trees unlocked. Just in this not demo, the, anyway. No, this yeah. is the very beginning of the game. That's, you think that's, this game will be that way? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can Although upgrade I think this from actually does carry over to the final game, the save in this for the demo. I hope so because I'd rather not play all this again. Agreed. Um, I don't want to fight a couple of the bosses again. They start, you know, there's a there's a dodge thing that it gets automatically unlocked after you've already been fighting the enemies that use the ability that you need, that you need to use to yeah. dodge the th and I'm, or, or I'm like why are there no fucking iframes? I can't dodge this guy's attack. Turned out I had to go two rooms ahead magically, you know, unlock the thing and now I can, and now the dodge doesn't need iframes because when the guy flashes a blue attack, you just hit the button and she automatically does like a, almost a cutscene around yeah. him and he can stab him in the back automatically and I'm like it was well, hard for me to pull that off i couldn't get the timing of that one. oh i thought that was the most like automatic brain dead I, I was i was insulted by that you mean the, the whole up and circle thing yeah i can only get it to work like half the time i thought like. that was insulting really the, the, how easy that was that was i mean not I mean, the other thing i'll give you another the other tip is the first thing you upgrade in this game when you get the skill points once it lets you because it makes you upgrade i think that one the first upgrade they make you pick a certain skill that is whatever yeah but once you get the next time you get two more skill points upgrade your parry to make it says i think it says like makes it easier to parry or something mm -hmm. there you go yeah. now that now the combat works is you can do the parry whenever you want like you can get through the first boss just by parrying and countering if you really need to yeah i didn't um, find this game to be too difficult it's not it's not super difficult um it's just not particularly interesting either like the other the other thing i don't understand why there's no there's no uh cancel and a jump but there uh, is cancel. Is, there's cancel in a Which block. I was surprised by. <laughs> I'm not, because it's, it's standard for these games. You need that. Like, a lot so, of games don't have it, though. But not character action games. They always have that. Yeah. Like, that's how that works. And so the fact that you can cancel in a block is normal. Cancel to a block and parry, I thought, was important. But you have yeah. to, of course. Yeah. But you also should be able to cancel in a jump. Yeah. And you can't. And it's bizarre to me. The other thing I don't understand is... So the combos, like, the pretty, combos are pretty simple early on. I assume that they open up because there's two more skill trees I think we haven't seen yet because yeah. they're, they're not unlocked yet yep. in, in the demo. Um, but there's, like, so there's the there's a, a light attack and there's heavy attack. You can do a light three light attacks and then combo into a heavy attack and I think another heavy attack. And then the other thing you can do is do four light attacks. That's another combo, but then yep. you can't combo into a heavy attack from that. Yep. The recovery from the fourth light attack in the four-hit combo is almost as long as the recovery from the heavy attack, 
but it hasn't stunned or knocked back the enemy, so you're almost always going to get hit. So I cannot figure out for the life of me why that four-hit combo exists yeah. in the game. Yeah. It's that kind of shit. And yeah, maybe yeah. I'm just a fighting game nerd about that shit, but I don't understand why I'd ever use that fourth hit. Is that fourth hit just a trap in case I hit the button too many times? Is that a skill trap? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I don't know what it. they're doing. I don't think it went that far. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this, Matt. Like, I didn't have a lot of problems with the combat in this. Like, I don't have problems with like, it. The I just don't understand the kind point of challenging. Of a but I think the what I was getting at is that they've kind of nerfed the game so that it that stuff doesn't matter that much, um, which may piss off some people who are looking for that depth and that challenge. But as I was talking I mean, about I earlier, I assume that it gets more later. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've just seen the very beginning here, and I, there's enough skill tree left that I'm like, well, there must be something in yeah. there, right? Um, they're like for for one thing, there's almost no aerial attacking in this. Well, you can which do has the be... death from above. Right, so but that's it. There's do an no, assassination. There's, but there's no air combos. There's no air damage. No. There's no launching. There's no juggling. No, and no. that has to be in here. We've seen the videos. No, you're right. They do show that. some juggling. You're so right. So that has to be what's in those other trees. Yeah. At least right. one of the trees must be air combo stuff yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I found this game to be entertaining, but also um, like offensive in some ways, <laughs> like and embarrassing in some ways. It's embarrassing. It's, yeah. it's like something you wouldn't want your family watching you play. Yeah. Like I said, I was very happy that my wife was gone <laughs> for um, Easter while I was mm -hmm. playing this game because she definitely would have said something about it. Well, and it's also it. sad because like I certainly have friends that I would, like, that would be impressed by the visual like quality in this mm -hmm. game, but I'm not going to show it to them because right. they'd be like, why the fuck is she dressed like that? Well, they're like, going to look at you like, why are you playing this? Why are you this? playing this? <laughs> I'm like, and that's when I lean real hard and like, oh, I do a show and I have to play it about the you know? Yeah. Oh, we should have mentioned the plot. So the plot I mean, look, I, if I didn't have to play it, I wouldn't. At yeah. This point. I mean, the de I'd probably play the demo to see what the fuss was about. I enjoyed my time playing this. I don't hate it. It's yeah. not. I mean, I th honestly thought this game was going to be like a two or three oh, out of I was, ten. I guess like, I thought it was going to be horrible. I mean, here's one for the older school people. I thought this was going to be X Blades, and it turned out to be more Blades of Time. Yeah. Like I literally thought this was going to be like a two or three out of ten. It's better than that. Like I was I, honestly, I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, the plot. I mean, the, you start out, you're in this ship coming to Earth, and, like, you're attacked, and then you get in the pods that go down, half your squad's wiped out. Basically, you're trying to save Earth from a plague. You're, you're, I think you're returning to Earth after it's been taken over by a plague or lost for a long time. The aliens or whatever. And you're, coming, you're basically robot, hot robot girls coming back yeah. to defeat the monsters <laughs> that rule Earth now. Yeah. Um, and, like... I don't know. Like it's 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 that thing. It's like why are all the why are all the soldiers in this game hot women? And then you're rescued by this guy, right? Who does not seem to be military. He's he's like a tech dude. Yeah, but and he, he follows you in his little drone through the game. Yeah, and he, everybody seems to know that all the women are the ones who fight, and they're all because they're, they're, they're body frames, and they got to upgrade this thing, and I, and we're all the same squad, and they're all just like yeah. they're, all, they're all just like girls in these ridiculous eight inch heels that are built into their own feet yeah and they're and they're all getting massacred by these giant monsters that, that look like the most generic mutant things to come out of anything again the art in this is bad yeah, yeah. the art is bad the tech is great the art is bad yeah um and one of the main one of the one of the key options you can choose is a short ponytail or a long ponytail and everyone <laughs> online seems to be picking the short ponytail so the long ponytail won't block her ass <laughs> um well there is an extra layer to the combat we didn't talk about though matt they're called the beta skills yeah. Um, basically, there's a gauge that you build up. Once it's full, you can essentially, like, cancel out enemy attacks. Mm. And so there's strategy in, like, choosing when to do that. Yeah. And and eventually, you, there's a skill skill tree thing where you can eventually chain from one beta attack into the next beta attack. Yep. Which is probably where the real key to doing the heavy damage comes in. Yep. Um, like, I see the potential in there. It's just, like... And, like, even if you leave aside the cheesecake nonsense and sort of all that shit, like... These are some of those boring enemies to fight against I've run into in a while. Yeah. Um, maybe not as boring as the same samurai 14 times. Yeah, they're not as bad as Ronin. Rise of the Ronin. <laughs> um, but, in I mean, in terms of kind of the horror, not the horror, but like the kind of the fantasy sci-fi hack and slash character action RPG stuff that's been coming around for the last however long. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you're fighting these nondescript. Can we just outlaw nondescript brown eyeless mutants from just <laughs> games in general? Are, have we done this enough at this point? Like, look yeah. at that guy. That guy could be from any game in the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. in this game, it's also bizarre because, like, love or hate the fucking 
like don't you know porn is free on the internet now <laughs> character designs of the good guys like it's at least like you can't mistake that character for anything else yeah. right like you're looking she pops out of the screen not just because her ass is so huge but because like you know, she looks different. She pops out. She's she's unique. You can tell her apart from all the other hot girl soldiers in the game. I can't... But the enemies aren't like that. No. The enemies are all sort of just sort of this nondescript brown mutant gray Alien thing. thing. And yeah. it's just like, it's weird that like that's... One, you know, the one side is that and the one and the other side is like really identifiable. Yeah. Um, oh, and this was fun too where there's like, oh, I guess you got to cross them. I'm like, do you want me to jump down there? Do you want me to, is there something I'm missing? And then you have to push. I feel push. like I jimmied this, is, this part yeah, of Yeah, this is awful. Like, and is I this, don't understand. Is this how I was supposed yeah, to solve it? that's how you're supposed to do it. it yeah, 100%. It, it felt like I was breaking the game. It, it felt like you were doing something <laughs> weird, yeah. Yeah, it's like it, Why can you stand? None of it makes any no, sense. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you're so you're seeing some of the traversal stuff. The traversal in this is not very good. Like no. the jumping, the climbing, they're swimming in this too, which actually does yeah, feel good. Swimming. But the rest of the clamoring they're swimming and swimming stuff... in Rise of the Ronin too. Yeah, that's true. You just never want to do it because it's gonna kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so there's a lot of different stuff in this. Like now you're seeing um there's these little camps that you can stop at and that you can like that's where you adjust your skill points. There's a record player where you can play music. And the funny mm-hmm. part about it is like these rest points are actually designed to rest. Like, you go there, and yeah, you play well, we music, remem- and you kick your feet up. Well, you remember, and like, they, they made a big point of that in the yeah. fucking promo material. It's like, you have a rest stop. You can sit in a beach chair. I'm just like, yeah. why are you telling me that there's a save point in this game? You have nothing else to talk about? Yeah. And clearly, they put a lot of effort into these places. Yeah. Because it's a, it's actually a plot point in the yeah. game that there are, like, like recovery locations set up by her our forces that before they were there somehow or yeah, something. Yeah. It's There's a lot of depth weird. to the combat in I'm this. I'm like, who the fuck is bringing vending machines in an amphibious assault? Like, that's yeah, not a yeah, thing yeah. that anybody does. What I found about this is kind of a little bit like also like Rise of the Ronin was there's like all these options in combat. Like, there's a system where if you like parry three attacks in a row or four attacks in a row, it like the enemy like shuts down. Like, you get like a reversal, like a triangle button, you get a really strong hit yeah. on them. Yeah. And then there's like, um, there's they, like, they do have like a, like a, Sekiro style stamina thing with dots under them and if, yeah. you, if you counter enough of them you get a, a big hit on them yeah um, there's stuff like that but you don't need it it's kind of like rise of the ronin there's all this stuff there but like i assume later you will maybe but like the section, one boss at the end like you have to use the blank for example like mm-hmm. i didn't really use it that much in combat but against that boss in particular it's very effective yeah um, and that's kind of how the way the game works. Like, you don't need to use all this stuff all the time. It's just, like, every once in a while, Some basically. of them, like, the, the enemies you were seeing in bef- uh, before with the big shield arm, like, the big bomb, the block stuff, you need to use the blink for that. Yeah, to that's get where behind you, That's them. where you're taught how to how to do it. Yeah. But you're not taught how to do it until you've fought, like, two of them. No, you're right. And you're, like, it's you're just like, weird. I can't dodge this fucking blue attack. You're like, what is this? And I was yeah. like, oh, that would have been good to know ahead of time. Because I'd been practicing to try to figure out the timing of it. I killed that thing like 17 times trying to figure out how to dodge the thing effectively. And it turned out I just didn't have the ability for it. What is this, Banjo-Tooie? Stop it. Both um, Blink and Repulse are for very specific moments. Like very specific attacks from the enemies. Otherwise, they don't really work all that well and aren't that effective. Um, But then, you know, the gameplay isn't mixed up that much. We talked about how there's like climbing and swimming. But for the most part, you're really just hacking and It really feels like a high-tech PS2 game sometimes. And that doesn't mean necessarily bad. Mm Because, like, there were certainly action RPGs or, like, kind of action combat. You know, it kept reminding... You know what it kept reminding me of? Chaos Legion. That, that that's actually a great comparison actually like yeah it's in the, the same, art even yeah it's, it's, it's like insane. in the same it's in the same like ballpark as like devil may cry and kind of the equivalent things but it's not quite doing enough to match those games but it wants to but also you're not sure what the fuck it's doing because it's so weird yeah and like it's got a bunch of ideas in it but you're like wait are those am i supposed to do? it's like it's it's really hard to describe. I really do encourage everyone to play the demo yep, because the demo will tell you whether it's, it's for you or not. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you get to taste pretty much all the different elements of the game and you'll have a good idea of whether you like the combat or not. Um, you'll obviously know whether you enjoy the art and the look of the game. Um, I'll say this. I was pleasantly surprised by it because I thought it was going to be really bad. And it's, no, a, it's, it's, a, bad. Com- it's a competent video it is competent. game. I just... I, I do think, like, with all the talk of the inspirations and where it comes from, and you're talking about something that basically is, um, you know, in, in I think in the minds of the developers and the creators, I think it's it's basically descended from Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, um, and Nier Automata. And 
it's honestly kind of insulting to compare it to any of those games. Yeah, it's not as um, good. The, the not gameplay not is not remotely. as good as any of those. Yeah. Like, the combat is probably the closest to Nier, but Nier makes it interesting by having, like, a fascinating world and a meta story to tell and, like, really kind of, like, unfolds itself as you go, and this just is not yeah. that so far. Maybe it's got, like, a really, like, mind-bending twist lane ahead, but I somehow doubt it. I'm intrigued by it. I, will, I am interested in playing the rest of it whenever it comes out to see what it does after this demo. The demo's about a little, I don't know, 40 minutes, 50 yeah, minutes long. Yeah, an hour, about an hour long. Yeah, exactly. roughly. Um, but to Matt's point, definitely I recommend everybody download this, give it a try. I think it will let you know whether you're into it or not. There's also I, QTEs in it, if that makes a difference to you. Yeah. Very minor. Not very many, but though. But, like, I, they, they caught me off guard a couple times. Yeah. Like, oh, you want me to hit that? Like, okay. Yeah. Um, so... I guess it's the demo was auspicious for me because I really had low expectations for this game. I mean, it's definitely better than I thought, but like yeah. you've already, you got like I, I'll tell you what's going to happen here is it's going to come out and it's going to get like a Metacritic in the mid seventies. And I ev- bet it does higher than that. I bet it's going to get Metacritic in the mid seventies, okay. and it's gonna and everyone is going to lose their fucking minds that it didn't get nines uh, because it's they gonna, think it's better than it's that. Got, because it's got tits and ass in it. Uh-huh. That's it's going to be the anti woke champion <laughs> video game that's what's gonna it's already is that yeah you're gonna have all these fucking loud losers whining about how this is the, how games are supposed to be and there's supposed to be escapism and girls can be hot in escapism and all i can say is if i don't know if you have to escape from reality to, to have see, hot <laughs> women to spend time with you that's a you problem yeah that is so. a you problem yeah skill issue yeah <laughs> that's funny um so anyway that's stellar blade it is a playstation 5 exclusive it is coming the 26th is that right that was the 23rd. Is it? I might be wrong. My notes here. I thought I had it somewhere. Yeah, 26th. What's PS5. on the 23rd? I don't know. Something comes out on the 23rd. All the games this month are in the back half of the month. Like, yeah, we did I Dossier. I, I think the first game in Dossier this month what was, the, like, the 13th well, or actually, something. Actually, what, so what are the big games this month other than this one? Oh, there's no big games. Oh, like, this is the biggest thinking. one, for that's sure. That's what I was yeah. thinking. This, this, is this, the, this is the only notable release. This is the real I'm big thinking. one. Yeah. yeah. For the, for the month. So anyway, coming out April 26th, it is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. And as we said, you can go download the demo right now. Um, finding demos on PSN is kind of a pain in the butt. If you want to find it, search for Stellar Blade. When it comes to the game, when the page comes up, click on the ellipses. And it'll bring up a thing for the demo, and that's how you download it. And that's how you download all demos on PSN. Yeah. It's not the greatest system. Also, you, you go to, if you go down to... If you scroll down far enough on the PSN tab, or whatever you want to call it... There is a demo row, and sometimes you can. They're find not always there, though. Uh, the the ne- one you're looking for, the, the newest it's ones, so are not always there for some. It's so. I mean, that's the Sony. Inter- that's the PlayStation interface since PlayStation Three. It's so. It's dumb. garbage. It's it really garbage is bad. for years and years and years. Yep. Vincent uh, says the 23rd is Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes. That's what it was. Ayudin and Chronicles. Tales of Kinsara. Yeah, those. That, those are what I was thinking of. Yeah. Because I'm actually looking forward to those games. Well, we're going to talk about one of them mm-hmm. here in a minute. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's Stellar Blade, a PlayStation 5 exclusive. We'll be talking about it and have our final review of it here in just a couple weeks. Up next, we're going to talk about a multi-platform game in Game Face episode 382. It's a game called Sandland. We talked, was it last week or the, well, it had to be last week um, because I was sick with COVID the week before. Uh, we talked about how Kira to- Toriyama had passed away. He was a creator of Dragon Ball. He also created this little manga called Sandland, like two decades ago, which never managed to really kind of catch on with the rest of pop culture like a lot well, of the other stuff. Nothing else has ever... You can't... Can't compare it to Dragon like Ball. saying George Lucas doesn't create anything <laughs> as big as Star Wars. Like, yeah, no shit. Touche. Yep. Um, but anyway, he, worked, he created this other manga called Sandland back like 20 years ago. Never was a thing, at least as far as video games are concerned. It ran quite a while as a manga. Um, but one of the final things that he did before he passed away was get this product into the video game pipeline with Bandai Namco. And the sad part is the game's coming out here very soon and he won't get to see the game released. But much like Stellar Blade, there's a demo live right now on pretty much every platform for this game. It is an open world. It's, they, they call it an action RPG. It really skirts along the line of action adventure and action RPG. Like the skill trees in this aren't very big. Um, but it is an open world game. It seems like it's all set in the desert because the whole plot is like you're in this desert wasteland. Water has become the most valuable commodity in the world. And basically your task in this game is to try to find this legendary water spring that you can then tap into and basically save 
all of your society because everybody is living in a desert with no water. And that's kind of like the major setup for the game. Um, the weird thing about this game, though, is that, like, most of it is driven by vehicles. So you can be on foot if you want to. And there are combos and there's melee combat and spells that you can cast and all that kind of stuff. But the bulk of the combat in this game takes place in vehicles. And there's like a quick like select screen in this set up just for it so you can quickly swap to whatever vehicle you want. This demo only had three of the vehicles um, in it and there are a lot more. Um, as you play through the game and go through the open world, there's these two dudes that follow you around in a golf cart. It's very strange. And they act as like co-op partners. They'll like buff you and give you like increases in your abilities and things like that or give you special abilities. Um, I have not yet seen any point where they actively engage themselves into the combat. So I don't know if that eventually happens as you play. But you'll see in this trailer here that we're showing right now that it isn't all set in the sand. Eventually, they do get to, like, lush, like, environments that have trees and all the other kind of stuff. This early section does appear to be just that, just an early section of the game. It also is the setting for the demo, I would add, though. So in the demo, I said there's only three vehicles. There's a tank. There's a mech, which they call battle armor. And then there's, like, a motorcycle sort of styled vehicle that you can use to get around and obviously it's the fastest way to get around the environment the uh the mech has like really good melee punching mechanics and can take like deal huge damage with its fists it also has like a machine gun uh, the tank that you use has a variety of different weapons and every vehicle has a special so the tank has this awesome and you'll see it here in the b-roll in a minute has this awesome like volley that it fires of missiles that automatically lock on and take down a bunch of different enemies the motorcycle has like a little drone that pops up that will shoot alongside you. Um, and obviously it can't take as much damage as a tank can. And then as I said, the mech has really great melee stuff. It also has a really <coughs> awesome like uh, shoulder cannon that you can use as well. So the vehicles are versatile and, and, and can be used in a variety of situations. The most important thing though is that a big part of the game is building up your vehicle. So there's a garage. Eventually you get like a hub that you can build. And the crazy part about this is this, this is also like a city builder, Matt. Like not just like you build this little hamlet or whatever. You literally build like a city. It's a little bit like a dark cloud. <coughs> you remember that yeah. RPG for PS2? Um, and that while you're playing this RPG, you're gathering resources and things that you take back to your base and you can build up this massive city where that basically you can go back to and refill your health and things like that. There's also a garage there um, that's run by this girl, Anne, and she will help you build brand new vehicles, will help you upgrade your existing vehicles. Even in this demo, there are tons and tons of vehicle parts for your vehicle. So if you download the demo and play it, go and look at all the parts that are already in this. And like, you can completely change how pretty much every vehicle in the game plays, which I thought was pretty cool and not something that you get in a lot of games. I mean, let's be <coughs> honest, there aren't a whole lot of open world games where the focus is on vehicles in the first place. Um, as I said, you can also fight with your fists. You can cast magic spells. Um, your lead character also does like crazy, like wrestling moves, like spinning suplexes and pile drivers and things like that. Um, there's a light attack and there's a heavy attack and you can chain them both in the air and the ground. This game does have juggles and things like that. Um, you can also dodge in four different directions, but this game is not like a Dark Souls like where any enemy that you come across can totally kill you. Um, it's a pretty mellow experience overall. Um, what else is there? Um, as I said, everyone in your party has a very small skill tree. Again, Bandai Namco is calling this an action RPG. Th that stuff is very slight. Like, the skill trees in this are not very big. Um, and then there's some gameplay variety eventually. Like, you build vehicles and you can, like, test them in races. There's bounty hunts. There's battle arenas that you can eventually find inside the game. Um, as I said, water is the most important thing in this game's world. Um, so when you go back to your base, you can drink some water and replenish it. Um, it is, again, the most valuable resource that you're going to find in the game. Um, if you die, you go back to your camp, and you can just replenish on the water there and then jump in any vehicle. As I said, there's a quick select for the vehicles in this, a radio menu that you can, and you saw it in some of the B-roll earlier, that you can select at any time to choose whatever vehicle you want. I think eventually you will be able to have eight at a time at your, at your beck and call. But in the, again, in the demo, there were only three. Here's some of the parts I was talking about. In the B-roll, you can see like a big part of the game is building up these vehicles and turning them into killing machines. Um, as I said, they're skill trees. They're not very big. And everybody in your party has a small skill tree as well. 
And as I said, they act as like support when you're out in the field. So you can also improve their abilities. So you improve their abilities to help you out in the field as well. Although you never take active control over any of the people that are in your party in the game. So anyway, as I said, they do mix up the gameplay a little bit. There's racing, there's these bounty hunts, there's battle arenas you can do. But really the vast majority of this game is just going out into the open world, driving around with your vehicles. The demo doesn't have waypoints or like mission objectives. So you just kind of cruise around. Like I ended up finding a couple different bosses to fight and things like that. There is, I wouldn't call it emergent in the style of like Dragon's Dogma 2 where like crazy stuff just happens. But you do stumble across just random stuff out in the wasteland. Um, that you can interact with and do different stuff with. So um, this is another game that I had really low expectations for. Everything I'd seen around this game was not encouraging. In fact, some of the previews that had come out for this like a couple weeks ago were very discouraging. Um, and so I expected hardly anything from this. And look, so far what I've played of this, it's not great, but it's <laughs> it's also not terrible. Um, it's certainly unique. Yeah, there's no other game like it. Like I don't even can't think of an open world game that's like vehicle driven like this one is. Mad Max. But that was oh what, yeah, I totally forgot what, about that one. Years ago, yeah, yeah, I guess that was like a decade ago now. Um, this game, this game is coming to everything. Um, and so, and uh, Rigor Mortis says the visuals are pretty nice. Again, total art style, all from Akira Toriyama. Like you can see it; it's clear as day. He has his own art style. It really is a shame that he won't get to see this like come to fruition after you know twenty years of the manga being out there. Him finally getting somebody to work on it with him, and him getting it up and going, and so close to it releasing, but he just didn't make it. So it's really a shame. Um, it will be interesting to see how people evaluate this game if they can leave their emotions out of it. Because mm -hmm. it'll be hard to pan this game. Oh, I, I won't have a problem. <laughs> I mean, we won't. We're game-faced. Like, we're no, brutally I, I honest. Don't, I don't actually like Akira Toriyama's art very much. It's Well, I'll say one thing, Matt. It's very distinctive. Like, oh, as no, soon you as you see it, it, you know. You always know it when you see it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And whether you like it or not, that's, again, a matter of taste. But, um... I was pleasantly surprised by this game. It had a lot more depth than I thought it was going to have. Again, I I think calling it an action RPG is a little bit of a stretch, um, but it does have RPG elements in it. It really is more about the vehicles, building out the vehicles, creating vehicles uh, based upon the objectives that the game gives you. Because again, as you saw in some of the B-roll there, you can really turn these vehicles in almost anything that you want that will work on almost anything. So um, so here's some emergent stuff. Like here, I was just driving around. Oh, look, there's a gigantic scorpion. It just turns into a boss fight that happens out in the middle of nowhere. Like there's another part where I came across like this radio tower and a bunch of robots that were under the tower started coming and attacking me. And literally they wiped me out with like these crazy laser beams in like two seconds. So there is a little bit of like, oh, I just stumbled across this thing that's happening out in the open world in this game. And again, it is very unique. You're not going to find another action RPG that's all driven by vehicles. At least they aren't very prevalent anymore. So again, much like Stellar Blade, I was pleasantly surprised by this game. Again, it is coming to every platform, even Switch. And this game also comes out on the same day as Stellar Blade. It comes out on the 26th. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a completely different flavor. The other thing I would say, too, is that this game, I think kids probably will be able to handle this. Like, I think this is probably a good, like, my first open world game for kids. So far, the content in it, I haven't seen anything that I would be like, eh, I wouldn't want my kid to see that. Um, but it's also very simple, but it also has... I don't the know. That mech is clearly naked. <laughs> But it also has like the building stuff that the kids love. Like you can build your vehicles. You also construct this crazy city that you build from literally from like a hamlet. So I, I have a, an idea that kids probably will like this. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this IP. If like eventually there's a kid's cartoon that comes out in the U.S. because of this. Sometimes <coughs> that synergy happens. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I enjoyed my time with this. I'll say this. The demo for this is not great. And I think honestly, Matt... It might have been a mistake to put this demo out because if you watch like the trailers and see what this game really is and then read up on stuff that Bandai Namco has put out as far as PR is concerned and learn what the game is and then you play that demo, it is like night and day. It's like two different things there. So I don't know if putting out the demo was all that good of an idea as far as helping the game's prospects, but I'll say this, in the end, I did enjoy it more than I thought I would. Do you have any questions or comments about this, Matt? Not really. No? Let's check chat and see if uh, they're saying anything about it. I think a lot of people just have probably. Oh, Rigor Morris UK says, If my six-year-old daughter finished Pikmin 4 and all level five, level 5 Dandori challenges, I assume she would have no problem with this. No, not at all. Um, that This is child's play. <laughs> Literally 
compared to the stuff that she's already played through. So yeah, um, you, you're totally fine. She will. I think she will like this game. And this, unlike some other games, like Princess Peach I talked about last week, I didn't think that adults would enjoy playing it with kids. I do think you might enjoy playing this with the younger ones in your family if you sat down. I think there's enough depth, there's enough um, layers to the combat that older players can get at least something, glean something out of this game as they sit down and play it with the younger ones in the family. So there you go. That is Sandland. It is coming to everything on April 26th. With that, it's time to get on to our sneaker of the week for Game Face episode 382. But before we do that, here's a word from our sponsor, New York Sneaker Society. What's up, everyone? Shane here. And one thing you may not realize about me is that I am a total sneakerhead. That's right. I've been collecting Nike sneakers since the early 90s. My favorites are Air Max 95 and Air Max 97. Now, one thing that's different about me from your typical sneakerhead is that I actually wear the sneakers. And because of that, they can get dirty. And that is where New York Sneaker Society comes in. Using their advanced shoe cleaning products, I turned an old pair of Nikes that looked like this into this. With their cleaning products, your sneaker life can go from a year to five or more. I know that I have shoes that are like 30 years old that I still wear because I've cleaned them. You can also lower your carbon footprint, haha, by keeping your kicks looking fresh. For my daily drivers, I also appreciate New York Sneaker Society's Refresh Spray to keep them smelling great and staying crisp. Head to nysneakersociety.co slash sifted to clean your shoes like a pro at home and get 10% off your order. That's right, that's nysneakersociety.co slash sifted for 10% off. So now, I, I got the big kit from New York Sneaker Society, and now I've gone back and I have cleaned up all my shoes. Every last pair of shoes that I had in my closet, I have revived them, and now I can wear them again. And one thing that I've found now that I've really restored all my shoes, the thing that I use the most are these sneaker wipes. And they come in this little box, and they're just this, this container of these wipes that you can pull out. And what I do, and I'll pull my shoe off just to show you. So this shoe in particular, it has like black sole, but then it has like the tan on the bottom. Well, that tan section here, get it on camera. This tan section here, it gets really dirty and dusty. And there's these wipes, you can just pull the wipe out, and all I do is just wipe the tan, and they look brand new. And it takes like a couple minutes to do. Again, as I've had these kits, I've started to discover stuff that I use more as I've gone back and really cleaned through my shoes. So make sure you use the URL nysneakersociety.co slash sifted. It's very important that you use that URL because if you do, you will get 15% off your entire order. Um, the big kits that they sent me to try out they're amazing. I literally revived like 15 pairs of shoes, not exaggerating. I've got 15 new pairs of shoes that I will wear now, but still I have all that other stuff. But you can buy the smaller kits that just really have the essentials in it for like 15 bucks. And if you use that 15% off, you can get it pretty cheap and then you can rule the school just like I am with all my old pairs of shoes, like they're brand new again. So again, go to nysneakersociety.co slash sifted, order yourself some shoe cleaning stuff and get 15% off and it's a big part of this we have our sneaker of the week where we find a game that kind of was bubbling up on the website through the last week and i will admit i had to dig a little deep this week it was kind of a slow week but my pick for the sneaker of the week is visions of mana it is the next in the mana line from the square enix rpg franchise have you been a mana fan in the past matt i like them I yeah mean, they haven't really been very prevalent yeah, I mean, recently. it's what, been like 10 years or something since the last one? Maybe yeah. longer. <clears throat> but I like this, the Super Nintendo ones. The thing about this franchise is it was one of the first action RPGs. You know, a lot of RPGs, JRPGs were still turn-based. <laughs> this is one of the first ones that went to a more action-based combat. Now, well, the, 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 more, uh, the, the, like the more significant thing at the time was that you could play multiplayer. That's true. It, yep. was, it was like co couch co-op action RPG. It yeah, yeah. was not really a thing at the time. Yeah. Yep. And this is also an action RPG. It's not a turn-based RPG. Um, but there was a ton. Like, Square Enix sent out a bunch of preview code. They didn't send it to us. But they sent out a bunch of preview code the last week. And so there's a big round of previews that went around for this. And I'll say this, Matt. They were extremely positive. Mm -hmm. Like, almost every publication was kind of gushing over this game. And, like, they put out a bunch of new footage for the game to run with those previews. I'll be honest. Some of the footage I looked at, I was like, really? You really thought this game was... The combat looks slow. 
in this mm-hmm. game for some reason. It just looks like it's, I don't know. I could be wrong. There's games I've watched before, and then I play them, and I'm like, oh, this actually feels great. Um, but I thought the combat looked a little bit disconnected. But as far as games that this week that were at a certain level of anticipation and excitement that went up a couple notches, there's no doubt that the winner this week is Visions of Mana. This game is coming to PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series, although it looks like it could easily run on just about anything. Um, but those are the three platforms that it's coming to. Um, and it is also coming pretty soon, so you don't have to wait too much longer. But it is our sneaker of the week for Game Face episode 382 when is that coming uh like next month i think mm. it's still a little ways away but not too far um and you'll that probably on my team it's on your team yeah was it a on the team or an alternate it's on my team well the that's good like six or seven the previews were very encouraging yeah so, i figured it would go well yeah so it's looking pretty good so if you have that on your team you probably got it late and it's probably gonna pay off for you um and then our last topic for episode 382, we're going to talk about another JRPG. This one is called Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes. The reason I asked you why it was 100 Hero or Heroes was because I was actually confused on, what, on whether it was Ayuden Chronicle or Ayuden Chronicles. Yes, yeah, one Chronicle, <laughs> 100 Heroes. Heroes, yeah. Um, and Matt, you actually got to play this because mm-hmm. you were a backer. I haven't got to play this at all. Mm-hmm. The other thing, too, is that we don't have B-roll from the demo because there's no. none out there. And they ask, you ask everybody not to. And they followed it. Yeah. There is no footage of that demo mm-hmm. on YouTube, man. That's crazy. So you get in fans, don't, don't snatch. Don't isn't, snitch. That, isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. So all I could do is just snitch or stitch together some trailers that they put out so far. So you're going to have to watch that while Matt discusses it. But Matt is a backer of the game. He actually got early access to it. And now it's going to pay off for all of you. So mm-hmm. Matt... What's up with Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes? Um, so this is the this is a Kickstarter from I think four years ago. Yeah. Um, it was uh, you know basically the the team that made Suikoden uh, coming back to make Suikoden again. Yeah. And, because uh, Konami won't. Yeah. And so the the upshot so the this is not the beta it was a backer beta they called it. It's basically about about a five hour first five hours. Wow. Of the game. Um, That's cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the save's going to transfer because uh, they are making some changes and upgrade. They, they took a lot of feedback and there's going to be some fixes. I think it's going to be a little easier mm-hmm. when it comes when it comes out, which is too bad. So was it I, challenging? It was it was somewhat hard. Like, like early on, especially like the, so this first fight here where you fight these rabbit warriors, mm-hmm. they all attack the main guy who's Noah, the guy the guy with the two swords in the bottom right corner, mm-hmm. and they killed him in the first turn. <laughs> like it was just like bomb, 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 and he died. So I just reloaded the save. I'm like, well, fuck you. Okay. Yeah. Um, that didn't really happen again. But like we're talking about like a hit from one of these from an enemy. Like well, until you've like leveled up and gotten further in. Early on, you can take a third of your life off. Wow, you the life of a character off, and you don't have a lot of healing opportunities. Dang. Um, so you gotta be, you better be on the ball. You better be on the ball with your circuit and like team balance work. Mm-hmm. Um, so how does that work? How does the team balance work in it? Um, well, you've got you can have six people mm-hmm. at once. Uh, three in the front, three in the back. Uh, the three in the back are protected from melee attacks, but they can still be hit by magic or ranged. Can they also? Can um, they cast magic? They can cast magic and they can attack. Oh. Like they can attack normally. Usually, you want to put magic and ranged people back there but like you can see noah's back there with his Mm -hmm. two swords yeah they can only but like so they can hit anywhere if they're ranged or magic but someone in the back can only hit the front row okay um even if like so there's there's a a distance element a little bit of distance element there it's not super important Mm -hmm. but like basically you want to you do want to put your weaker your squishier characters in the back yep um like the by the end of the demo by the end of the, the 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 game i had um uh, a crossbowman, a healing mage, and a an offensive mage in the back, and I had double sword dude, and um, a Noah, and I had uh, the girl who does uh, martial arts kung fu stuff who can stun people, and I had um, one other who I can't. Oh, the, the wolf guy. That was my front row. And what then, is the what's the plot of the game? And then you can man? also have uh, you, you don't know. I didn't get to it. It wasn't available here. But there are characters that do not function as frontline combat but they can be in support slots i think you have three support slots so support characters can go back and they will basically they're kind of like the assist characters in a marvel versus capcom game you can call them in to do whatever their ability is to Mm -hmm. help you out during the fight um what's the plot the plot is that there are basically it's very suikoden like it is suikoden in all but name okay um 
the there are two uh, nations. There is uh, that this the guys in the blue coats. They are one nation, and the the kind of more Asian style, like the main guy with the red coat. He's mm-hmm. the other. He's the they're the other nation. Okay, and they have been at war for the shark people. Can't, can't argue with shark people. Um, uh, yeah, animal people. Uh, they can't uh, uh, see you while they talk to you, though. <laughs> yeah, animal people, which is a big thing in Circuit End. You know, yep. there's been the ducks and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, hello. And uh, so basically they were at war. They were, they've been hostilities for a long time, and now they are not. And um, you're, it opens with you. Uh, you're part of a town watch on this fairly small village, and you are, but you're near a dig site. And if you've played the... Uh, the action RPG they put out of this from like like a year or two ago. Uh, you didn't Chronicle Rising or something? Rising like that, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a big emphasis in this world on digging into ancient ruins and finding what are called lenses, including... Uh, uh, they keep calling it the Grand Lens in this, but you can hear them call it... In Japanese, you can hear them call it the Mother Lens. Okay. Which are like Mother Load. It's a Mother Load pun, I think yeah. is what they're after. So you're looking for these magic lenses, which are essentially like runes from Suikoden. Okay. Um, except there are also runes in this game that everybody oh. uses to cast magic. So, <laughs> so instead of because in Suikoden everybody had runes to cast mag- magic, and then there were 13 true runes, and like usually the main characters of the, a Suikoden game could use true runes mm-hmm. that have to be like it's like a chosen one kind of thing. So in this, the mother lenses or the ancient lenses are sort of the the, the true chosen rune ones, equivalent. Yeah. And you do you're going to fi- try to find one, and it's a joint operation between your watch group and the military people of the previously rival country in your territory Mm -hmm. and so you're going with them to kind of guide them because you know the area better and the person who found the thing got lost in the woods and doesn't know where it is you go in and you get stuck in the dungeon basically with these guys and the funny thing so the two main characters Sukaden often has like two main characters that have sort of a relationship that they have to deal with over the course of the thing and they tend to end up on opposite sides of the war mm-hmm. so you know here we go <laughs> so it's it's the guy with the two swords and the guy with the blonde kid with the blue coat who's okay. a shine um the whole first dungeon is both a tutorial and kind of their meat cute um like there's some heavy gay undertones to oh, this wow. game. like like they are I don't know another way to read this. Like it, to the point, like like they nothing romantic happens. Yeah. Like, you know, nobody kisses or anything. Yeah. But like they really like each other more than the average Friends. two dudes hitting it <laughs> off. Dude. And later yeah. on, they they run into each other again when like start stuff start like, basically war starts to break out because there's a bunch of political machinations. There's a soul side thing with other characters that clearly join you later because there's a thing much like Suikoden. There's a thing where like oh that character has a enough care taken in their design it has a color a character you know, portrait. Yeah. so you're gonna join my team <laughs> later i get it that's funny. um but like and this up isn't in the demo like th- these fights are you know classically so it has kind of like paper rock scissors big battles yep. that was not in the demo yet oh, okay there, there's a lot this game is huge you don't even get to the point where you have your own castle because like one of the one of the staples of Sorgan and yeah. you have to build your home base yeah you don't even get the home base yet oh wow in the first five hours, first five hours. But, yeah, it, there's all this game's huge wow this game's epic um beyblades um, <laughs> the uh, I only just got the fishing pole when I no, you by did. the end of the demo. I mean, it was it, there's a lot happening here. Um, and it, you I mean, it, it looks like there's a lot of tertiary content. Yeah. yeah, and you end up basically at this area where where you get the you go back to his home village, and because it's a JRPG, that home village is dead. <laughs> it's, it's burned like to the burned ground. ground. <laughs> so it gets attacked by Empire some forces you don't really recognize, like assassins or something. They burn the whole place down. Probably lo- apparently looking for you, which uh, is surprising. Uh-huh. And the shine, the I think that's his name, the 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 blue coat, blonde haired guy, the flaxen haired boy, as they, <laughs> as they call him a few times. Yeah, uh, he shows up. Is also there because he because he his team is is archaeological. He's there looking for ruins. They happen to be in the area, and they go find, and you meet up again. And they're like, oh my god, oh wow! And so he helps you get away, and your uh. team get away. And then the his second in command's like, I'm glad to meet you, Noah. He talks about you all the time. It's good to put a face to the name. And then they see you leave. Okay, cool. And like you're like, and you're like a little in joke that came up in the first dungeon. And there, and Noah's like, hey, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go get and go meddle and cause some good trouble and stuff. And he's like, all right, go. And he's like about he's and. and uh, Shine is like I'm afraid that next time we meet we'll be on opposite sides of the battlefield. And he's like, hey, if we both follow our hearts, we'll never be on opposite sides of the battlefield. And <laughs> runs off. And the second in command is just like, I can see why you hit it off. He could, you know, I think he's good for you. You could use a friend like him. And then Shine goes, a friend. And like, I'm like, I don't know another way to read that. 
<laughs> this is a love story, people. I'm sorry. That's what this is. We'll see how it goes. These games are like 80 hours long. It could oh, go yeah. anywhere. But it's clear. But it reminds me of um, you know Circuit N2 with Joey right. and uh, and the main character, yeah. and they end up on opposite sides of the war, and yeah. that becomes the tragedy of that because I'm, I'm, I assume that's what's going to happen here to some degree mm. until eventually you. Because there's also a character, there's even a character who's like a big, ex- big, like from the un- the enemy, the militaristic nation side, mm-hmm. and he's like a big colonel general guy, and he's involved in the in the negotiations, but everyone thinks he's the one who's causing the problems and accidentally is stabbing everybody in the back, and he's literally Luca Blight from <laughs> from Swicken and Two. Like, yeah. it's, it's like, okay, you're following the formula here, but I love the formula, so it's kind of okay. Yeah. And you can go around and start gathering people, and like, you see a guy who looks like he has an interesting character design, you can talk to them, and he's probably going to have a little join quest for you, yeah. and they join up with you. And it like, is funny how you can tell by the character designs yeah, how involved the characters are. And like, be. and and it's it's very good. So basically, I mean, it's basically a PS One RPG, but what if it had modern tech? Uh huh. And it's great. Yeah. It's great. It's it's exactly what I wanted. Wow. Um, it, when I when I backed this thing four years ago, and I said I ho- I want the Circuit N guys to make a modern version of Circuit N Two, that is exactly what they did. Wow. It is. It, I have I have no notes so far. Now, other than the uh, formation stuff, are there any wrinkles to the combat? Yeah, I mean everybody's got their weaknesses and stuff, and you got to kind of prioritize who's going to attack what because, like, you know, those magic guys are more dangerous because they can hit your back row or they can hit everybody. You know, mm-hmm. those group spells. Uh, the boss fights tend to have what are literally called gimmicks. So some t- some fights, big fights, will have what are called gimmicks, and you have you can like do the gimmick uh, uh, action instead. So like, there's one fight where there's this thing that keeps popping up out of the sand. It's this magic thing, and on either side of the fight. Either left and right, there are these magic books that one of your mages has set up, and you can instead of attacking or doing something else during that turn, you can send one of your characters to uh, activate the spell book. And if you pick the right side, this giant mallet comes down and whacks the thing on its head, and has a good chance of stunning it, so it can't attack you. Uh-huh. Otherwise, it gets two attacks around. Oh, okay. So you want to try to guess right and figure that out because then like you're gonna buy yourself some time because the boss fights take a while they're they're not easy there's another fight i mean most turn-based jrpgs that's the way it is there's another fight with a bunch (laughs) of guys and so it's like there's a main guy who can throw bombs that hit everybody two bomb hits and most of your characters are dead Uh uh-huh uh and there's a guy in the back healing him and there's a guy with a shield who will automatically jump in front of the other guy to block him so you basically got to kill these guys and then in the middle of the fight once you kill one of them he will move over and he activates this lever that'll drop like debris on you, but there's a lever for the for the crane that's dropping it. And if you time it right, you can hit the lever instead of your action for one of your characters and move the crane over and drop the debris on them. Ah. So it's that kind of stuff. Oh, interesting. Um, it's it's not like I've gotten party wiped a few times. Yeah. Like, I, it's not a pushover. But if you're a veteran of these things, you will know what to do. Yeah. That's kind of what the way I'd say. But you think that's the right way to approach it? But you can't just hammer the X button. And I mean, there are auto battle options. Oh, like really? You can, you can program everybody to fight a certain way, like almost like the Gambit system from 12, and auto battle something if you know the fight is not really worth you going all the way through. Yeah. But you're not going to want to do that on boss fights because yeah. they're a little more complex. Um, and Circuit N had those too. Circuit N had auto battle as well. What's the deal with the 100 heroes? What's that about? It's because it's like Circuit N. In Circuit N, you ha- you collected the 108 stars of destiny because mm-hmm. 108 different characters for your team, and there's going to be 100 characters on this, I assume. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the, yeah, know, you have to collect. Don't you have to build like an army of 100? Yeah, you build a whole army. Yeah, it's it's Circuit N. Every yeah. Circuit N is that. Yeah, and a lot so, of people, Matt, are watching this, listening to this. I've never played Circuit N. Well, if that fuck, <laughs> those fucking remasters would come out, that might be yeah. different. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's been gone for so long and. Yeah. I would imagine most people watching this show know what Circuit N is. Yeah. Well, I don't know about all, but... Maybe not Sneaky, but everybody else knows what, <laughs> what Circuit N is. Because he has like a 20-year period yeah. that's just blacked out. <laughs> if you don't know what Circuit N is, go play Circuit N 2. It's one of the best games ever made. Yeah. It really is that good. Or wait for this fucking remastered is supposed to be out last year. Like, yeah. If that ever comes out, go ahead and play that, because Circuit N 2 is still one of the greatest things ever made. So how are you feeling about this? It's great. Seems like you're pretty excited for it. It works really well. The challenge is solid, but not frustrating. There's a lot of you can see kind of the stuff opening up right as it, right as it ends, and you're like, oh, like, yeah. yeah. Um, it's the story is interesting. The towns are cool. Like the look is good. Like everybody, I like the look of the game. It's got sure. like kind of that HD 3D look that like you know Octopath Traveler kind of has. It's also more, has that animation where it's like it's a little more colorful. It could use like one more frame, or could it? Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, it's just enough to leave your imagination yeah. there. Yeah, it's a cool looking game for sure. It also has like a lot of 3D polygonal stuff in the game. Yeah, all, it the, mixes all the, the environments are, are all 3D polygonal. The yeah. characters are, are, are 2D sprites. Yeah, and it's and it interesting works. how, yeah, in this game it works. And there's a couple other Square Enix games where it works really well, but not always. Mm. Um, but it does seem to work really well here. This game comes out on the 23rd. Yeah. And it is coming to everything, including Switch. Yeah, I, I imagine phones could run this. It's yeah, not, what what a, what uh, what platform did you play it on? PC. Yeah, I have the I have the um, the backing thing is coming in for. I have a PC copy and a and a PlayStation copy. I will play the. I will probably play the final game on PlayStation because that's where I played Rising and that imports save stuff to change like your progress in building up the village in that will actually Im- impact how the village is portrayed in the main game. I believe. I think oh. that's the idea. Or that was the original idea. I don't know if that actually happened. So did you play that on PC as well? No. I played you did on, it. I played on, that's what I'm saying. I played on PS5 because that's where I played Rising. I got gotcha. So my completed save on so, Rising is there. So you're going to play the final game on PS5, is yeah. what you're saying. Okay. And I probably will as well. So uh, there you go. That's Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes. Any word on how much it's going to cost yet? I think it's full price. I think it's 60 Oh, yeah? You think that's going to be worth it for... I'll pay it. Yeah. I mean, I, People paid, like I already one. paid it. Yeah, I paid yeah. it four years ago. <laughs> you did, yeah. You've been waiting for that investment to pay off for a while. Uh, but that is Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes. I mean, the other thing about this game, this is like the... Oh, Vincent says it's on Game Pass. Oh, it so is. There you go. This is like the dead developer or the d- dead person it episode because also the guy who's working on this game... Yeah, one of the key guys ...has here, passed, here passed away, away and he's not going to see this game released. Mm-hmm. What an interesting coincidence that two games ended up on the same episode in yeah. the same I mode. mean, they're... I mean... That generation is getting up there. I mean, we're getting to the point, Matt, where our heroes are starting to mm-hmm. die. Like, mm-hmm. I, 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 I wake up in cold sweats at night worrying about Miyamoto. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Even though he doesn't really make games anymore. Like, I don't know. It's like, I feel like all this is coming, Matt. Like, all our heroes are getting to that age. Like, they're always a little older than us because oh, yeah. we were the kids and they were the adults. And now we're getting up there and they're getting way up there. So... Yeah, starting to see some of our heroes fade away here, which is uh, a little sobering. I mean, Toriyama was way too young for mm-hmm. that. He was, wasn't old, really. Yeah, he wasn't Not by old. modern standards. Yeah, 68 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Modern science, you should not die that young. So there you go. That's Ayudin Chronicle, 100 Heroes Coming to Everything on April 23rd. We'll be talking about that, giving it its final review here in just a couple yeah. weeks Eat on Demon, so It is fully voiced. It even, Every character is voiced? Uh, all the main characters are. As soon, okay. If the game stops to do... Like a cutscene of any kind, all the text is voiced. Okay. Um, I played it in Japanese. I don't know how the English voice acting is. Okay. There you go. Ayudin Chronicle, 100 Heroes. And next up, it's time for... That's right, it's time for Name That Game Tune, brought to you by soundwizardry.com. If you need any audio work done, whether you're working on a game, whether you're working on a YouTube video, whether you're working on anything where you need audio, go to soundwizardry.com. They are great dudes, and they are really skilled. They worked on several of the Game of the Year candidates from last year. Last time I tried to reach out to them, they were on location working on a game, which I found to be interesting. Um, that they're you know bringing sound wizardry out to work on games on location which is really cool they're great people they're very skilled any kind of audio work you need done go to soundwizardry.com i also forgot to note last week when we were talking about outcast a new beginning that the music mixing in that game is one of the weirdest things i have ever heard because the music will just pop in for whatever's happening in the game at full blast oh yeah and then after the fight or the scene or the whatever's over it will just stop no nah. yeah i remember could could have used some sound wizardry lots of games uh, yeah. are like that man a lot of japanese games are like mm. that where the audio like again i turn off the music a lot a lot of games use music to hide horrible sound design mm-hmm. like i'll say this though like rise of the ronin sound design really freaking good like i turned down the music in that and that game's alive um, voiceover is terrible, but mm-hmm. the actual like foley work and stuff really good in that game. We don't talk about that stuff enough, I feel like. But I feel also feel like we live in like a sound bar age mm-hmm. where most people aren't like me and they don't have like the five point one or the seven point one. It feels like most people now are just happy with having like 
a Bluetooth sound bar underneath their TV and not getting the whole surround I mean, sound with, experience. With the surround stuff costs, I can't really blame I don't, them. Yeah, I don't blame them either. And so that's why I don't talk about it a ton because I know a lot of you guys don't have setups like I have. Every once in a while, if I play something where it's really impactful or I really notice it, then I'll bring it up, but usually I don't. So, But anyway, soundwizardry.com, they're the people who make that stuff sing. Go to soundwizardry.com if you have any audio needs. The other cool thing about Sound Wizardry is that they are supplying the prizes for Name That Game Tune. So if you win this game, you get a free PC game. Now that's important because if you do not play PC games or you don't have a friend who plays PC games, just don't play. Let somebody win the code that's actually going to use the code to play it. And again, I'm totally fine if you win it and you want to give it to a friend or your brother or anybody else that's going to use the code. It's yours to do whatever you want with it. Just make sure that either you're going to play it or somebody else is. A couple other things before we get going. If you have won this year already, do not play. You can only win once every calendar year, and that's it. And then the final part of it is, is that the chat goes into slow mode, which means that you can only put in one chat every 60 seconds. So don't just spam the chat with a bunch of random game titles trying to guess the name of the game. You're going to fail because of that. So make sure you pick your spots to chat and make your guesses. So here's how it works. I have five audio samples from a video game. You just try to guess the name of the game before Matt does. Matt has won recently. He's, I think you're a little bit better at this than you were even at the visual one. So you guys gotta be on your toes and pay attention. So let's get everything set up here for name that game. Matt's got the headphones, he's ready to go. Let me turn up the volume on your headphones, Matt, to make sure you can hear everything. Can you hear okay right now? Yeah. Are those levels okay? A little, little more. A little more? Is that That's good? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Matt's ready. Are you guys ready for Name That Game? Here comes the first sample in three, two, one. All right, let's see if we have any guesses. That sounds like Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing New Leaf. No. Monkey Island, no. Animal Crossing, no. Final Fantasy 16, no. Now remember, people, you can't just guess. New Horizons? Yep, we have a winner. Ash is in the hourglass. It is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Wow, we didn't make it too far on that one. <laughs> you guys got it fast. Good job. Wow. The crazy part was... I had an even more obvious first one than that one, hmm. and I moved it out. And something about that guitar sound quality that is just that's Animal Crossing. Yeah, well, you got. I mean, you knew it. I knew. I just didn't know, know which, which one. one. Yeah, here's the other. Well, here's all the work that I did for nothing because you guys got it on the first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. I didn't hear anything. Oh, really? There's no sound. Really. Well, there's no sound oh, I turned down your headphones already. Yeah. yeah. Here's the fourth one. And here's the fifth one. Slagathor is saying, even I knew it was Animal Crossing, and I've never played that twee bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's twee bull crap. I'm not a huge Animal Crossing fan, but I can understand no. why, why other people I like it. it. I mean, I for play, sure. I, I, I've always said I play it until I have a complete fossil collection, and then I just stop. I don't even mean to. That's just the <laughs> That's end just of the interest works. in that game. <laughs> as soon as I have all the dinosaurs, I'm done. Well, I guess I made a mistake with that one. I did not do a good job. I like for it to at least get to the third sample, so that's my mistake. Um, but anyway... Get at me to get your free game. You can send me a DM here on Twitch. You can send me a DM on Sifted where I'm at Shane. You can send me a DM on Twitter where I'm at Dinfire. You can send Sifted a DM on Twitter, at Sifted Games. Get to me in any of those ways, and we'll get your free code out to you. Congratulations once again for getting it on the first sample. Damn it. I screwed that one up. I did wonder before I sat down, like, so many people have not just played Animal Crossing. They have spent so much time with Animal Crossing. It's like... I played I mean, there new. There are probably people who could identify it from the footsteps. You're probably right. You yeah. just put like the sound of the running. That first one, the first sample did have footsteps in it. Yeah. And I that... heard that and I heard the, the ding of selection of mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's... it's hard with a game where people are going to have played it hundreds of hours and just every sound will be ingrained in their room. It's... Well, it's also tough for me because it's like I don't want to pick games that are so obscure that people will never get them. 
So it's like a line I got to walk. Like, I want to make sure somebody wins. Like, I don't want to just end up at the end. And everybody's like, I never heard any of that crap. I mean, I could do that. I could make it so that nobody ever won. It's a, I want to make it, like, competitive, but make sure that somebody gets it. And right, but I, there are very few games in the world that wouldn't be, nobody would get. Hmm. I could come up with a few that I played on the Apple IIe back in the 80s that probably no one else knows but me, but most stuff that was released commercially in the last 20 years, someone's going to know it. Oh, there's, like, tons of games, though. Like, little indie racing games. Like, I could I could definitely make it so people didn't get it. Yeah, but that's why I said risk commercial. If something was on a shelf in Walmart, someone's going to know what it was. That's a good point, yeah. So, anyway, I'm doing the best I can. I think it's still fun to play. At least I hope you guys are having fun playing it. I have fun doing it. Um, and so we'll keep on keeping on with Name That Game Tune. And here's the good news. That ended so fast, we actually have some time to answer questions for the first time in, like, forever on Game Face. I don't think we've done Q&A in, like, two months, maybe. Maybe since we've come back from, like, the holidays. Seriously, I don't know if we've done one. We've done a couple. It might have been January. Yeah. It's been a while. So anyway, let's do some Q&A. Go at Sifted Games in chat so we can find your questions. Um... Mellow Pintor, I've tried sending a DM to Sifted Games and gotten a response. Mellow Pintor, I have not had time this week to um, address that. I will send you your code in a couple hours when I get home from this. But I've been just doing pre-production. I worked through the whole Easter weekend um, anyway, but I'll get your code ASAP. Um, Rigor Mortis says, maybe pick games where people don't generally put hundreds of hours in. Okay. Um, East Demon, what do you think of Dragon's Dogma 2 selling? To Why do you keep asking this? Mm. <laughs> Why does he keep asking about... Dragons, did we say it wasn't going to sell or something? I wouldn't have. I don't, I don't remember saying anything like that. No. Why do you keep bringing it up? I don't get it. Anyway. Um, Sleeping Turtle 3, did you guys ever cover Alone in the Dark? No. And that no. is a missing game. Maybe next week we'll cover it. Not it. I'll play it. <laughs> um, no, we have not covered How it yet. How much does it cost? Uh, it's like full price. Not it. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I will jump on that grenade for y'all. We'll talk about it in next week's show. Well, Commander Fett says, did you see any good April Fool stuff? We had a whole topic on it in today's show. You have to watch the beginning of the show. We talk about all the fun April Fool stuff that we saw. Um, Ashes in the Hourglass. With Nintendo having no game past June, what do you think the odds are that Metroid Prime 4 is coming out this year? Well, I drafted it on my fantasy team. But I think that's zero. And I think I'm going to get a zero for yeah. that. I drafted it 10th. That is a Switch 2 launch game if I have ever seen one. Once we found out that it looks like the Switch 2 was delayed out of the year, we kind of just assumed that it's not coming out this year. No. Um, so, and I'm really disappointed, no possible obviously. way they don't launch that with a new system. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it'll be also be on Switch, mm -hmm. but there's no way that's They will wait to launch it with Switch 2. So, 100%. yeah, I do not think that's happening at all um rock and roll four five eight what are your general feelings on gamers that claim the eras of the 80s and 90s are superior to now i hear from many people online that gaming is worse which i don't agree with um rock and roll i don't know how old you are i don't know if you're as old as matt and i and you lived mm. through those eras playing games like we did um i do not think those eras were better no I enjoy them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're great. I've gone through great effort to still be able to play many of those games, but the I have found, as someone who's been playing games for over 40 years, the best era of video games is right now. Yeah, it is. They're better than no ever. No matter what right now is, that's it. Yeah. It's, they always get better. They always There's always new stuff. It's a technologically driven and innovation driven and, and, and refinement driven industry and medium the game it's always going to be better going forward yeah and if you don't agree with me try to get a modern kid to play a game from the 80s they'll hate it they'll it's last what? like 10 minutes maybe they like why why are you playing this we yeah, got a high score like that is an alien yeah, concept like hi what <laughs> that concept is as alien to to them as like what you're killing yeah basically it's, yeah, it's, it's not true. gonna happen yeah uh, there's way better now i say all the time on this show like my eight-year-old me his brain would leak out mm -hmm. his ears if i could see the games now oh, like, yeah even the bad ones even the bad ones would blow my freaking little yeah. mind like i'll so, still go back i mean i i got the analog pocket and i went back and played a bunch of stuff like on that and the the analog genesis and the turbo duo like that's all great i love going back to those things um, I played Street, Streets of Rage 2 for the first time in forever, and that's great. Like, you know, I still enjoy it, but, like, you can tell me a Streets of Rage 2 is better than, like, Dragon's Dogma 2? No. Nope. Not happening. No. Yep. It's way better now. You guys are living in the golden age, golden age of video games. We're not getting as many. That is one thing I would like to see change yeah. is maybe getting some more games. Like, but the games that we're playing now are just yeah. incredible. Like, I know it's sacrilege, but it's like that 
Shredder's Revenge Ninja Turtles game, that's way better than the original Konami beat em up. It is. From like, come on. It is. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah, it is. People just don't remember what those no. what it was like. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to call it there. We've hit our time for Game Face episode 382. Thanks to everybody on chat for making this show better, fact-checking us, asking great questions, playing Name That Game, all that stuff, giving us Twitch Prime. In fact, if you're watching this show on YouTube right now, go down below into the description, learn how to help us with Twitch Prime. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can give us a free $2.50 a month for free. For free. It costs you nothing. It makes a huge difference for us. Please do it if you can. We talk about it all the time. People do it live in our chat. and We always call people out. and We really appreciate it. If you do do that, you end up running along the bottom of Pactor Factor in a ticker. If you do that, you also get Pactor Factor a week early without having to be a part of our Patreon. Please do it if you can. And if you can't, if you want to help us permanently, please go to patreon.com slash sifted. That's where the bulk of our funding goes to keep this show and all our other shows going. You can pledge a dollar there, a million dollars a month, whatever you want, but you only have to pledge $4 a month to get all our content at least three days early. And if you can't afford to help us in any way, you don't have Twitch Prime, there's still stuff you can do. If you're listening to this show on a podcast service, review it right now. It makes a big, big difference. Reviews on podcast services are everything. Like I said last week, we are we got a bunch of reviews on Spotify, and our reviews on Spotify went up immediately. There is a one-to-one correlation between you guys reviewing the show on podcast services and the show doing more views. So please do that if you can. Again, that costs you nothing. Even if you just give us five stars, love the show. It takes you 10 seconds to do that. It can make a difference for us. We appreciate anything any of you guys do to help us. Obviously, thanks to all our sponsors. They're making a big difference. Thanks to Matt for opening up his home to do the show here. Thanks to you guys for showing up in the live chat and making it awesome every single week. So we'll be back here again next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash games. Hope you guys can all join us then. We'll see you next Tuesday. Game Face is up and out.